Some will do it. Some more will get it done. We'll finish it. Don't worry. Yes, Pastor. All right, uh, uh, Sister Suma, can you start your presentation? I'll just give yeah. a presentation yes, right to everyone. Yeah, done. Yeah, okay. You can see the screen? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, uh, since uh, Pastor asked me to do on this article, uh, what Jean gets, uh, I think you all have read it. Jean gets says is that if you need to start a church or establish a church, do it after understanding the philosophy of the ministries uh, of what exactly is important to us when we uh, think of starting a church. And I found this book very interesting is for because for me, I maybe unknowingly as uh, we grew up in a home, which is a Martoma house, but my dad was very much like this. He would uh, never, uh, he was not very keen on going on Sunday services, but uh, he had a lot of, he was very critical about a lot of things in the church, even at that point of time. So, uh, but when he went back to Kerala, he was very, very involved. So anyway, so Gene gets, uh, he says, if you want to start a church, establish a church, first look at the philosophy of ministry. And before you start, have a great, good understanding of what is important. And uh, he says, uh, wherever there are people, there is going to be function. That is, I just took, I mean, in my head, an example that came is of a joint family. We know that when a joint family is there together, although we don't, maybe the grandpa doesn't specifically say, oh, I was earning before and now my son needs to earn. Or uh, although the mother may not say that, uh, yes, I need to be helping in the kitchen or whatever. We all know that when people come together, we all have functions and uh, to perform. And because of this function, we have a form in the house. We know whom to go to if we need to take an advice or who is going to uh, do the saving of the money or uh, various things. So uh, we know that when there is people, uh, Gene gets puts it this way. I've taken all the diagrams from the book. And he says that we all know that when people come together, we all perform or functions happen. And through these functions, there's going to be a form or a structure that will be there. Then he says to understand this better, uh, uh, he says that, let us look at all this. Why do we need this? That is the form, pattern, structure, and how important it is to establish a philosophy of ministry. That is what he tells us. And that's why he gives us the circle of form. That within form, we may have a uh, uh, form, uh, uh, maybe various things he mentions in that. I will uh, Because I will go to the example of the verse and then we will discuss. Then he says pattern, uh, then a structure, uh, taking back to the um, uh, joint family, we see that there is a pattern being formed, uh, followed. We know that there is a structure and it's a kind of an org organization, right? Even whether it's a small thing, it's an organization. When we have the, uh, the father-in-law, the mother-in-law, everybody living together. And then uh, uh, Jean gets mentions where there is an organism, there is organization. So I was immediately, I went to my... Uh, what we learn in science, you know, like if there's a virus, it will multiply, it will form into something. It is there is an organization even in that. So uh, taking from there, Gene Getz puts it in this uh, diagram that he shows us and he tells us we need to understand this importance of this and is it how important it is in forming philosophies of ministry. Uh, then he goes on to uh, explain to us the three lenses. He says, we need to look at all this, that is form and pattern and structure, tradition, based on what the scripture tells us, also looking at it through the history and through the culture of that time. All this three we must keep in mind whenever we establish a church, wherever we establish a church, so that our philosophies are right. And uh, he says that uh, if we go through scripture, scripture is the first lens. And he says it is the base of any uh, church that we establish. And he says from scriptures, we get various directives and functions. And uh, we all know if we read the New Testament, we see 
uh, all kinds of directives and uh, we see that they are meeting together, they are fasting together, the wait on the Lord, a direction from the Holy Spirit, maybe they, they share their things, uh, they go ahead and uh, visit other churches, give to other churches. These were all functions that we continuously see. We see it in Acts also explained by Luke and then we also see it even in Timothy and in Titus and all this. We, we see various functions, but how important it is will lead us to forming principles for our churches. So we have here the scripture, through scripture, we can get the directives and functions and therefore we form principles. And one example that Jean gets takes is through from this verse. So this verse tells us in Hebrews, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the days approaching. Any, I mean, I just want you all to tell me which are the two functions that you see here? Anyone can tell me. Coming together and encouraging one another. Yes, meeting and encouraging were the two functions that we see here. Now, what Jean Gett says is, they didn't tell how many times they met, they didn't say how they encouraged, you know, but these were functions that we have seen across in many of the New Testament books. So he says, don't, he basically says, don't make it a big deal where you meet, how you encourage. And uh, he, this is one picture that I like. Uh, so I just, again, from the book, he says in the first century, they met together and uh, there was no form that was the same. They met in different places. They met in homes. They met in the upper rooms. They met in the uh, outside the temples. Uh, temples they met. They met anywhere. But they did this throughout. So that became a function. And when we are still doing it in the 20th century, and then we still believe that there is no need of a uh, form, there is freedom in form, we make it into a principle. It becomes a principle that can be followed. Like, and then he goes on, he, he's very specific, uh, specific about absolutes and non-absolutes. Absolutes is basically what is important. And non-absolutes is something that may not go across every culture, every uh, place. Like if we take in smaller places in Kerala and all, they, they still have in some places a form of meeting, how they meet, maybe only the uh, ladies. I mean, today also in all the mainline churches, you see ladies that will be sitting separate, men sit separate. You never see them sitting together in churches, even today. So there are various things that are still just followed the way it is. So Jean Gett says that, how do we understand function and principle? If it is an absolute, then it is a principle. And if it is, I mean, sorry, if it is a absolute that is going across all cultures and non-absolute is where we can change the form. It does not mean that, you know, it, be, it has to be in a specific way. So how we decide what is function, what is principle is how, how important it is in the growth of the church. Then uh, what he yeah, so the next one more verse that he takes is this, day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stop teaching and proclaiming good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Now here, what is the function and what is the form? Anyone can say. Function is teaching and proclaiming. Yeah, and the, uh, the form, form is they met in the temple yes. courts or from house yeah. house. So, the uh, yes, or even so, from day to day, that's also a form. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> again, from day to day, where do we meet? You know, we don't do all these things now, but uh, and the best part is how uh, you know we see across uh, various years and centuries. I mean, I, I like this book because I could completely relate with it. Uh, you know, coming from a Marthoma background, when I married Najib, Najib is a non English speaking. And I, from the early 80s in Bombay, the main Marthuma church, we had English service. So I'm absolutely, I'm clueless. When Even today, when I go for a Marthuma in Malayalam service, I, I, could, I don't understand much. Because from early 80s, that is when I was in my teens, I have attended English service. So in our churches, especially the mainline churches, they are still not ready. Even today, Marthuma churches, many of them don't have English service every Sunday. 
they will have it once in two uh, two so because of that there are many other issues you know i was thinking about it when a malayali girl marries another christian who's a non malayali speaking then what happens so we are still stuck to a lot of things and we have not really changed uh so then what jean gets concludes is the bible often teaches function without describing form when it does describe form it's partial and incomplete what form is described varies from situation to situation this is again another thing was in first corinthians chapter 11 we all read it during our um, the lord's table if you see how it started and why paul wrote those things were these guys were meeting for uh, the lord's table but they were eating like as if they've not eaten before and so he puts up rules and how it needs to be done and the meetings were especially for fellowship of really learning more about god and it is and that's why if you read that passage again you will see why he says examine yourself before you come to this table eat in a particular way but we have gone and made it into so, something so special that even today my friends ask me from the marthama church what kind of uh, back, uh, communion do you take and because of that what has happened in marthama church is it's such a big this thing that they have it only once in a month twice in a month no way it said like this but we have made all this into we are so uh, stuck up with these things even so even my mom she would ask me how do you all take communion as chumma or bread engana ningal ellarum you know how do you all just break a bread and eat it so uh, uh, jean gets very nicely explains that be careful when you start a church establish a church what is the philosophy you base it on and uh, this is just a conclusion that i wrote from again from his book itself hence we conclude forms and structures are not absolutes it is for us to go through scriptures understand directives and functions that can be considered as considered as absolutes and supra cultural that is all across every culture and thus lead to principles so you have just put a few these is a catholic church you know this is how they take the communion here you see all ladies covered head and here you see uh, men and women sitting together and uh, all of that yeah then we come to lens of history i think lens of history is very nice because not just a bible gives us history of uh, how christianity spread or what it taught us if you go through even uh, history of our uh, um, churches and everything you will come to know how and what uh, why it happened in a particular way that today our churches are if we read through acts we will see how it was so much spirit led why did paul travel mm -hmm. in a particular manner or why did uh, you know philip decide to stay back somewhere there are, there is so much we can learn and therefore he again tells us when you are starting a new church in a new place be uh, careful understand what is the history in that particular place maybe or what do you see in that particular place and like i was just and and he says from history learn and pick up what you need to and leave what you really need not like if you take the crusades christian crusades that happened way back i think 1 1099 or something you know where you see the european christians how they went after the muslims and uh, the jews because uh, the the western uh, christians thought that they could take over jerusalem and there was a lot of killing that happened during that time or even if you take uh, how marthoma or the saint uh, how saint thomas came into and now what is the nasrani christians and what is the kanan christians you know i was just reading and i saw that kanan christians are when persian traders came into the south coast and how it came, there were two persian bishops who were, who used to attend the nasrani church and then they kind of split because of difference in the what they believed so he says when you start a church somewhere be careful how you start what you ca carry with you the history and all that and he says that you know sometimes we get so stuck up with history and then he gets back to function and form that uh, there must be a form that through history our churches are carrying and we hold on to it because that's what gives us security oh tale tu neetu prarthikanam alingi you know oh we have to take communion on that sunday when there is communion and the palli ponam or when the bishop or somebody is coming or oh, you need to go and get the you call it the mutta the, the cross that he blesses you with this all you know i have just related it to things that i have seen and grown up with you know so uh, uh, this all becomes important and these are just history traditions that have gone on uh, and um, 
even recently when one of the bishops died you know my my children were asking me why is he sitting and being buried you know so uh, i went and read a lot about it so it was really uh, strange but yes uh, these are history so jean gets tells us when there is a history to a church understand it if it really needs to be carry forward or you can just leave it uh, even in our own lives and uh, he says it's not just a scripture church history also gives us a lot of philosophy that we can yeah so and then he goes on to say this is another very important thing he catches on to he says whenever like from the beginning he saying when there is people there is going to be function and form and we carry along with us in our churches lot of forms through history and when are we are able ready to change only when there is a crisis change happens in these things only when like now today you see we are all on zoom who thought we will be doing this we break bread on zoom while in marthoma churches they don't do it so now what happened to all that communion that you were doing instead i was thinking just yesterday i should have called one of my friends and asked how you all take communion like yeah, otherwise it was uh, yeah because otherwise it is you know you have to book your slot everywhere even in bombay and all they book their slot 50 people could go to church during the this pandemic time and that's the time achan is giving the communion but now what do you do when it is a lockdown so when crisis happens is when you like sit back and think oh my that like is it really necessary that things have to be done in this manner and uh, jean gets uh, speaks about how he has always been a uh, um, a teacher in theology colleges in dallas and uh, one more place in uh, something starting with m i forgot anyway so uh, these two places he has been a teacher all throughout 20 20 years or so he was teaching and then he goes on to start a church in dallas he says that the first few months i was enjoying but there was something that was really disturbing me i didn't know what it was and he says when i sat and thought about it he realized when he was in college there was always a structure these lectures i attend or whatever it is there was a structure when he came to start a new church he saw that there was no structure they just went on with functions first then they realized that what can be the forms so he says that you know sometimes change can cause a lot of uh, uh, we are resistant to change unless uh, something happens in our lives and he realized that when he had to move from a theological college uh, atmosphere into starting a new church he saw that certain forms uh, were really not important it was a function of uh, people coming together what they did together and all that so so he says that no one likes change history has shown the only constant is getting fixed to a particular form or structure and of course he talks about social studies and he also says sometimes we don't want anything to change because we of lack of understanding and uh, like we told you know meeting at a uh, he goes on to explain that how in certain churches if it is on sunday this time uh, is the service they will not change that time for whatever reason they will keep it at that time like you see the methodist church when i moved from bombay and since najib didn't understand malayalam uh, the achan himself achan who got his married was a wonderful man uh, in the marthoma church he told why don't you go to methodist church i in my life i had not heard there's something called methodist church although i was born and brought up in bombay so i thought now what is this church you know methodist church and when we went there and when we started attending i saw that on uh, not on easter on good friday sundays they meet at some in the afternoon time you know because the bible gives us that time when it was almost afternoon or 3 3 something it mentions they start their service from that time on good friday sundays and they continue to do so so sometimes because of lack of understanding like for me when i went to the gulf meet friday's church you know was something new to me so uh, sometimes people get stuck on these things are you how come you are going to church on a friday and not on a sunday so uh, he says that uh, when we look through history why we do not want to change form sometime and we are so stuck up is because we don't understand the difference between function and form 
and uh, we do not understand the difference between a structure like uh, yeah, when we were watching chosen uh, something that really stuck the movie chosen stuck my head in my head is when nicodemus goes to meet john the baptist and uh, because he wants to know something more and he goes and stands in front of john the baptist john the baptist is in prison and he looks at him and says i could sell your uh, robe and feed the poor the same thing you know one of my cousin uh, cousin's son has become an achan so when for the achan patam they need that uh, that they wear a robe you know it is very expensive the entire a whole family in kerala and we had to contribute towards it you know to buy that so uh, these things still continue because i think it's a lack of understanding uh, you know there must be significance i don't say there is no significance but we can do without it so he goes on so jean gets goes on to say please do not uh, we often confuse non absolutes with absolutes he comes back to these two terms those things that should change and things that should not change uh and he quotes a, this verse which i thought was so applicable because paul i think was like this to the jews i became like a jew to win the jews to those under the law i became like one under the law to those not having the law i became like one not having the law so as to win those not having the law to the weak i became weak to win the weak i have become all things to all people so that by all possible means i might save some he says and uh, that is what has become a huge issue in our churches i have a friend again i bring this back because i have a friend and uh, she was from the orthodox she married into the martoma so her name got cut from the orthodox and uh, when in martoma uh, she didn't have a good marriage uh, she was in the marriage for almost 16 years she divorced and uh, so now her name is cancelled from the orthodox church now she is without a membership anywhere so uh, and uh, what has happened in this whole thing is she's got married again she's a she's a believer but because of various things that she's gone through she's got married to a non believer and now she says chechi where do i go you know and uh, of, of course i mentioned go to an independent church so nobody is uh, accusing you pointing finger fingers at you and you are able to worship god so i think there are a lot of things that we in churches need to change or even when you establish a church need to remember then he goes on to lens of culture and uh, he says that if we want to see a church grow based on where we are placed we need to be able to start smaller churches and he again jean gets talks about uh, how uh, when they started in dallas this church and the people and the number was increasing so much he started smaller churches but what happened is when the smaller churches started it became difficult it seems uh, you know to get people together and his main church also was increasing in number as a church the main church also was increasing and they had smaller churches everywhere and he says that when whenever they met together sometimes it became difficult relating with one another because in the main church people who have been there for very long felt that they have more importance and that the people that who came from the smaller churches and he says that uh, you, you know based on what the culture is you cannot remain small if you are about our father's business of reaching people of christ and if you are reaching these people you must then design structures to accommodate these people in their own cultural environment without violating new testament principles of church life and uh, i have seen and i remember in our uh, place in tiruvella where we come from my cousin got into a lot of trouble because uh, one of the achins he was very keen on getting a, the the dalit or the the lower caste somebody converted and he did that man did get converted and all so my cousin asked my cousin was a little bit of a um, what do you say a change making fellow he asked the achin achin the mole kritiki mo manchin the mone konda he asked will you get your daughter married to this dalit boy son the dalit man son so uh, sometimes you know we want them to come uh, we get them converted but beyond that we don't do much and that we see in so many cases in my own family i have a cousin uh, who uh, married a muslim guy she had a Uh, uh, wedding in the church the tirmeni was a part of the wedding they had the wedding and all that but after that nothing happened and uh, they actually separated 
so uh, when we talk about from the lens of culture we want to do a lot of things but uh, we have to be careful why we do these things you know if it is the the lower caste people that you're converting are you ready to bring them into our own churches give them a role make them uh, you know give them equal and that is something i saw beautifully in new life church in doha when we sat together we not, never bothered you know who it was what language they spoke because definitely it was a migrant crowd there and we saw it very beautifully in that church it was very nice no one bothered oh he might be a driver she is a maid from where she came what she spoke which language she spoke another place that i was very uh, uh, got to experience this was the gurgaon bible fellowship where we were in gurgaon we had people it was the first time i'm seeing uh, christians from so many christians from the north from meerut from orissa people like that it was very nice they bring in with them their cultural differences and all that and then you meet it is uh, it is nice to see especially because we are the same principles and directives that we still hold on to and that is what is important and that's why he says history will give us events we learn from those events culture also brings in i will just once again just go back to that yeah see that's why he says that scripture will give us directives which will lead to principles histories will teach us through events lessons that we need to learn culture will show a situation which has implications do we really need to keep this do we need to respect it maybe when we go to kerala when i go to kerala with my children if we have to attend uh, church i tell my children don't wear anything that is you know to uh, this thing then my older one always asks why what is there i said it is different when you are in bangalore you dress like that so sometimes you respect that you know because of the various implications and situations and what we have seen in certain culture we don't want to um, defy everything so we need to understand what we need to keep in mind when we are writing a philosophy of ministry to establish churches and uh, yes if we go to a village when we i had moved to, to bangalore uh, and still going to the marthoma church we had a doctor who had a, a, had a started a missionary something this is in the uh, early 90s 97 and 98 and uncle used to take us to a place where he had sta started a mission work and i remember going there and i was so uncomfortable because that whole the church set up and you know we had to sit down on the floor along with all the villagers it was also new to me but because somebody coming from the city you don't put up chairs for them if you want to bring culture and god and all that we have to respect maybe the culture of a place also But how important it is we will have to see the pros and cons is what jean gets says so in conclusion what we understand from this article is this the lens of scripture is basic in formulating these principles the lens of history and lens of culture add additional insights particularly in helping us discern and apply these biblical principles together all three lenses help any seeking person to formulate an adequate philosophy of ministry that is all any questions anything i don't know pastor <laughs> thank you sister it's all put our hands together for uh, some of the i hope you all uh, understood yes, thank yes. you yeah, thank know. you this was the first time i i have i i gave a presentation to all pastors <laughs> excellent and very good yeah. thank you yeah. so how many of you had read the article and come uh according to the internet pastor joseph we cannot hear you something you are saying pastor joseph is on a call i think okay Uh, so uh, when we come for the, when we come for the meeting uh, though somebody else will be presenting it is important that uh, we all read and come because after this we'll be having a discussion we'll have lot of arguments we will have lot of difference of opinions um, and this article is a perfect article to create discord and uh, <laughs> this community <laughs> okay so uh, let us uh, kind of review what uh, soma sister was Uh, talking to us um, how would you apply it in our church context uh, what are the things that we have understood uh, so different 
you know, uh, what, what do we take away from this article? Uh, of course, so my sister applied it in different ways and showed how she sees it. Uh, so that gives us good examples. Um, but I'd like all of us, because we are all from pastoral background, uh, to see how we would apply this into our church settings and things like that. Yes. presented very well uh, with a lot of good examples from Matama Church and the Kerala context and uh, very good presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think it George means you can... a lot coming from you. Thank you. Yeah. Pasha? No, one other thing that we can discuss is see, uh, just for uh, example, you see like uh, she was pointing out how the communion, like people were taking, you know, uh, people didn't understand that, uh, uh, the, the, without understanding that the, they were, uh, you know, they started making communion as a fellowship meal. You know, people were eating and they had their own groups mm -hmm. and they started eating. Mm -hmm. So Paul wrote something to uh, help them to understand the meaning of communion, right? But then we have taken it now to, to a level you know, where uh, Sma was ex explaining that you know the, the, the priest comes and puts the bread into the mouth and things like that. You see. Uh, so there's a the, the, what was the original uh, original idea of, of the communion and, and how uh, what was the atmosphere in which it was partaken? What was the atmosphere that was prevailing? when they partook of the communion. And these are some things that you know, people have a lot of issues about, even the believers' churches. You know, we, you know, there are times we tend to make it as a, even in the believers' churches, many of our churches, like we, we make it as a, almost as a ritual. Our worship is over, okay? Or we need to now hurry through the communion so that you know, we can start the message. Uh, it, it, it is so much so, like, you know, sometimes people feel, uh, you know, the communion is a burden. You know, somehow you need to get through the communion. Okay. <laughs> get through the communion and get off to the message. You know, the, the, we can find it in many other churches uh, where we are not taking at least a little bit of time, you know, to, 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 to you know, commune with God and commune with one another in the, in the, you know, as 
uh, some of the texts say, you know, the, word, the communion being, uh, uh, are we not communing with the body of Christ? In the sense, there is also a relationship, a communion between one another that is, uh, uh, that is spoken about uh, in the book of Corinthians uh, when Paul is writing. So just one example, you know, what happens is like we are taking something and then, you know, from one extreme, you go to another extreme. Let, let me give an example, Pastor, with this. Um, uh, we've been always at the uh, cutting edge with it. Want, we want to change form. Okay, we've done it uh, as a small little network that is under new life. And I'll tell you the problems I went into. <laughs> okay, so uh, I felt somewhere as our, we were journeying together in our ministry, this communion was just a transition. There is no meaning in it. It is just a, it's a funeral service instead of a celebration. Okay, uh, it was a pathetic situation to us. Okay, and so when I studied and I understood Paul's uh, the spirit of Paul in what he was writing to this, it was about um, the philosophy of oneness, of fellowship, and all of those things. And that 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 First Corinthians eleven was written in the context of there were divisions in the church. And he expressed the divisions in the context of uh, uh, communion, how it is. And when he's asking you to, asking you to examine, he's asking you to examine not the, your sins that you committed the previous week. He's actually telling, are you all in one? Uh, are you one? Are you one in the body? That is, are you one in the whole thing? But today what happens is we understood examine is we collect all our sins and bring it on Sunday morning and put it before God. And we examine because we understand examine like that because it has been our traditionally that's the way we have got. So what we did is, um, in, uh, I, I wanted to go to a little more extreme, but uh, before even I went to that level, I got smashed. I got hit so badly. <laughs> okay, so two things we changed. The first thing is, traditionally, only men are supposed to do this. Okay, you go to any church, including a born again believers church, if a woman were to exhort and dispense the communion table, it is blasphemy. Okay. And I know in many of our churches, we still be, still be like that because I, let me, please let me continue and finish. Then I'll, uh, then you can take me, take a go at me. Okay. So, uh, so we, we introduced the concept of women exhorting in the community slowly, steadily. We didn't ask them to dispense. We had men dispense because we knew that if the dispensing happened by women, we are finished already. So we asked the women to exhort because we have to bring change slowly. You can't bring change suddenly. Okay. Then uh, there's a lot of teaching I did on, on this. And you know that um, halls and everything came only in uh, by second. Uh, but by the, when the church became institutionalized only, we had hall-based uh, services and things like that. Otherwise, it was always in the house. And uh, with the institutionalization, actually, women went out of the scene. It became a purely men's domain. Okay, um, But when it was in the houses, uh, there was no distinction between men and women in the way they functioned. If you look back to the first century and how they worked. Uh, and if you look at the ministry of Paul, and if you look at Romans 16 and many other places, you see the amount of weightage he gave to women in the ministry, how he supported and things like that. So the other thing was, um, the communion was a meal, full meal uh, for a significant period of time. Again, by the end of the uh, first century or the beginning of the second century, in the second century, it became a, 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 a symbolic meal. Otherwise, it was a full meal. Okay, and it was full meal was possible because they were churches were all small, they were all family based. Okay, they were all maybe uh, you know when we uh, when we as we go through the course we will see this that at some points uh, we you know when when I'm thinking of the church at Corinth I'm thinking about you know a stadium full of uh, one six thousand seven thousand people sitting. It's not true. There were just forty people he was talking to. Okay, approximately forty people, and to the highest number they say it could be about one hundred and twenty people. So we were addressing, uh, Paul was addressing family-based churches. Paul was addressing small communities. And for them, the communion was a meal. So look at what I did. I slowly introduced women to exhortation. It went okay, but I had a brother and a couple, a family come. Uh, they, they called me during the week uh, and uh, I went there and met them. They were looking for a church. So I went there, I met them. Uh, and after the Sunday, they came to church. And uh, after the service got over, so I went and met them. How are you? How, how did you enjoy the service? Ah, I, but there are some problems. I said, uh, Auntie, what are the problems? Well, uh, first thing is, so what we did is we kept two tables because our hall is very long and uh, people come and participate. So we kept the bread and the cup in two tables. 
he, she said, the body is only one. You divided it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is a form that she is believing in. And she is based it on a scripture which says the body is one. Okay. Uh, and the one body, uh, one bread, or the one body symbolizes one, one single piece of bread symbolizes one body. So she took very uh, offense at that. And uh, then she said, um, unfortunately, it was a woman that day exhorting. So she had a problem with that. Then um, she said there is, um, mm, uh, she had uh, several issues she brought up. Again, again. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a, the part of, you know, so we created another model. Uh, when it is true communion, it's not supposed to be taken in isolation. All communion in most churches is taken in isolation. It is between you and God, right? And what do we do? That's the time we confess, oh, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I did that. I'm sorry. I did that. I'm sorry. Actually, when you commit sin, you're supposed to figure, finish it off at that time itself, right? We're not supposed to, uh, you know, keep it till Sunday morning. But we have created a situation where if you have every week, thank God, at least by the end of the week, the sins are forgiven. Otherwise, if it happens only once in a year or once in a month, your sin is going to get stacked. Because we have created a situation where people understand that sin has to be, sin has to be taken to the communion table. But when Bible says that when you can, when you commit sin, you confess, you deal it with on as early as possible. So these kind of forms we have created. Uh, so we created another form that in order to bring about this idea, we don't want a funeral service. We don't want anybody sitting in isolation and taking part. We created a system where, um, uh, uh, you know, as, as soon as the communion exhortation is over, someone comes forward and says, would you rise up and greet one another? And uh, you can express your greeting by hugging and you can do many things and you know whatever way you want to pray together and everything and then you're free to come and take there will be a song going on behind people can come and take the communion as in uh, we also took off the idea of uh, only those who are baptized we took off the idea that uh, children cannot take part in the communion please don't get, get scared i'm just uh, i'm just working on it okay just these are things that we did okay and uh, and it was amazing the way things changed our communion became the best part of our service <laughs> Everybody enjoyed the communion part because that was a time of uh, real communion. We enjoyed. Uh, and a uh, uh, couple of, uh, maybe two, two months or three months into this, one day, uh, boss calls me up. He's no more, so I can speak openly. Uh, Pastor Sam calls me up and says, hey, I want to meet you. Uh, so from that tone, I understood. I, he, there is something I'm going to get. So we, in among pastors in Bangalore, either you get masala dosha or biryani. Masala dosha means not that heavy. Biryani means you're finished. <laughs> so I knew this was biryani coming to me. <laughs> so I went and met him. Then for the first half an hour, he bashed me up. <laughs> I said, Pastor, what happened? So the previous Sunday, he had come to our service. So, and he couldn't have, see, when, you know, when, when we do this part of getting up and greeting one another and all, I mean, if me and Pastor Juju was there, we would get up and hug each other or we may shake hands. But come, my young fellows will not shake hands. No, they'll do, yo, man, yeah, okay, and all that. They will do. So they do the same thing because their culture is there. Okay? So in front of Pastor, one of our brothers, one of our younger brothers, Sanjay, and uh, one Devak was there. Devak passed away recently in COVID. So these guys got and they, they kind of hit a five five, then hit their buttocks together and did it all those things. <laughs> Pastor Sam saw this. <laughs> then he thrashed me. Or... <laughs> that fellow, what is this man? This is how community... Come and... So look, look, look at his statement, okay? Communion is a solemn time. Solemn time. So you have thrashed it. You have messed it up. And now I'm getting complaints from other churches. I said, Pastor, how did other churches get involved in this? No, no, no. Some of those fellows came here. They saw this. They went and told their pastor they wanted it like that. Now, Pastor, they are stuck because you did all this nonsense. <laughs> He bashed me for like about one hour. He thrashed me. So after all this, I asked Pastor. So by then I had done this program already. I had done this part of the course. Okay. So I told Pastor, Pastor, can we? I mean, I understand. I respect what you're saying. Can you give us uh, time to discuss? Open discussion without closed minds. No, just 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 discuss. Can you show me from the Bible <laughs> where it says that you cannot do this? <laughs> Then he, he also knows. I mean, he knows scriptures so well, though he's not going to Bible college, you know. He got upset with me. I said, forget all that. I'm not going to discuss with you anything. I said, okay. Uh, then he said to me, see, I know what you're saying is correct. I don't have a problem with what you're doing. Okay. Um, but communion is solemn. I said, uncle, can you show me where communion is a solemn occasion? <laughs> 
can you show me where communion is mentioned as a solemn occasion? Okay, then he said, okay, forget that also. We are a network, so we have patterns. Let us follow those patterns. Please don't go away from the pattern because it creates a lot of problem for me. I get the calls. You are not handling the calls. I am handling the calls. I don't know what to say. They think I'm biased towards you. They think I'm giving you all this freedom because you, have, you work with me every day. You do what you like and then, you know. So I said, Uncle, I respect you. I respect you and I understand what your problem is. And I definitely don't want to create a confusion in the network because the cut, the, what happened is now the network or our group of churches have built a form or tradition, okay, which is not bad. Why? Because if you read, I mean, Pastor Sister Suma missed to say this, that uh, patterns and forms give us security. Patterns and forms gives us security. Okay. We have a common thing that we are doing and that will give us security. Okay. We have something. Our faith is attached to these forms. What Gene gets is saying, don't attach your faith to forms and patterns. Attach it to functions or normatives or clear directives in the scriptures. Okay. Which are clear. So um, I came back to so the problem is what? One second. Hold on. Huh? Just hold on. Mm -hmm. The problem is now, I, I, I have a problem in the George. service. Yes. Hello? Yes, yes, yes George. Can I, can I interrupt? But let me just finish this. Let me just finish this. <laughs> I'll play, sir. So then what happened? Um, so I now the problem is I had brought this in a grand way to the church. We were all doing it different. Everybody was excited. So initially, many people had anxieties because, you know, suddenly security is gone. Where is Pastor George taking us? Are we going away from, is this a violation? Is it a heresy? They were all scared. I mean, I understand. They were security till now in those forms. Theology, nobody is bothered. Nobody understands. Nobody wants to bother. They like all forms, okay? So they, they, they joined with me. They trusted me. They, I took them and they started enjoying. And as they started enjoying, they were starting to get uh, come comfortable in that. Now I have to come and tell them the straight opposite because my boss told me. So I have to speak against my conviction now, okay? So I came to the church and I openly told, my senior pastor told me that I have to. So then many people got offended. George, you all keep on changing what you want and all of this. I said, no, we are not going to change anything, but we will obey our. So what we did, we still continued the communion as a funeral service. Okay. So we uh, exhorted uh, and everything, everybody took their communion. Uh, we, we served the communion at the place for some time. And after we served the communion in the place and they would always look to God and themselves and pray. What we did is after that got over, so that solemn time is kept uh, intact. After that, I told get up and greet one another. So there's no problem. I obeyed the pastor, still continued in our understanding of what it should be. So we, we honored, we kept some kind of form <laughs> and pattern. But at the same time, we continued to uh, move in what we believed in terms of that communion should be. I'm not saying that this cannot become a form later. Okay, it's possible. But what I'm trying to say is uh, the, 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 the security that a form brings is very, very strong. Traditions are very, very strong that we hold on to and they're very secure. Okay. Now, uh, my wife and me, we have been on a journey of trying to make the church uh, uh, a family leadership situation. Okay. Uh, when I talk about family leadership, I say that the woman and the man both are together, husband and wife are one unit and they lead the church or they take part in the leadership of the church. Man, I get thrashed for it like anything. No, only men are supposed to lead. I have problem everywhere I go because uh, only men are allowed to lead. Why? Because that is a tradition that we have carried on for. And Paul has made some statements which Paul had a context to, but we have taken it out of context and we have used it as a... But I'm. these are personal convictions and I have implemented in my uh, churches and we are seeing the fruit and the benefit of uh, equal participation of men and women in the ministry. And the women are now uh, actively, their gifts are... Uh, my simple logic is very simple. When God, uh, Paul, when God through Paul stated the uh, gifts in the Bible, it was never mentioned gender specific. 
okay and if you read uh, first corinthians uh, uh, 14 towards the middle he says dear brothers and sisters then he talks about how the new testament service took to place place for someone if someone has a, a prophecy they get a benefit somebody has else has then the other one sits down so he created in that he says by the way the translation says dear brothers but if you go to the original greek it is dear brothers and sisters that sisters were participating in a new testament service equally like men okay but anyway these are things that i learned i studied and uh, and i started to slowly change forms you know very slow and this thing but I still got bashed for it and i don't have any problem in getting bashed because that would be the normal result of anybody who tries to bring a revolution when it was john has uh, uh, william tindale all got killed at the stakes i am also going to be bound and and put on to the stakes and put fire that is normal so when we want to bring change we have to be we have to have martyrs we have to have revolution every revolution will have martyrs but my idea was that hey let us change forms we will not change the function that what was the function the function was very simple as when we got together in the name of jesus we should have the breaking of bread whereby which we remembered the cross and that was that is what i believe has kept the church going till today the communion table the remembering of the cross and understanding the benefits of the cross is been always central to this thing but today the communion does not have in many churches don't have an exhortation the communion has just become a tradition the communion has no effect on the person except for listing out the sins and throwing it on the communion table and thinking he is forgiven because he is brought it to the communion table and just and there are you will not believe it even in our churches there are people who believe just like the martoma person i was a martoma i believed that when i took the blood the bread and the cup i was forgiven and i am sure in even our churches also there are people who believe that when they take the bread and the cup they are forgiven but you know that is far from the truth okay but it's a tradition that we carry okay i leave the floor open to just i gave you an example of what is normative what is form and what is uh, uh, function and i have not touched on culture i will bring culture as a next topic before we close anybody wants to talk and discuss pastor you uh, uh, pastor uh, uh, santipan pastor please tell yeah see the uh, see the, the spirit of the law i mean the word of god has got a spirit behind okay now communion has been instituted for uh, uh, is not only to remember the death of the lord jesus christ but as we read in the book of corinthians we also see that it is never taken individually it is always taken together with somebody so as paul is saying like you know though we are uh, many we are one bread and one body he mentions so there's a communion with the lord and also communion with the people okay which is uh, emphasized that we are together and we are the new body the whole body the body of jesus christ was broken and we are the spiritual body so we are one so that the, the, there are two dimensions to this now what i'm saying is again the form is in the form that you are trying to bring it to your church the people are saying hi fi to one another at the time of taking communion okay i mean you see uh, you see that there, there has to be it's a celebration you see i always emphasized is a celebration in fact now at church we take almost 15 20 minutes for communion but so how do you celebrate what would be the presentation of celebration how see, would the celebration look yeah let me say you see George, the passover itself the passover like the good friday is celebrated as a morning putting ash away from i started with ash wednesday okay but the passover the old testament passover itself was a celebration there was only one day of mourning that was the 10th uh, day of the 7th month okay the day of atonement see everything was a celebration okay the passover also is a celebration so new testament and now we celebrate christ the passover okay so now we you understand that we have we are limited by time now we can we can you know celebrate the passover say at the church we can celebrate the communion for 2 hours and we can close the service also okay so what i'm saying is so there is a we do have a form we have a church for 2 hours 2 hours of service in the 2 hours okay how much time we can take to celebrate communion okay yes like we can take more time and uh, it's like one of the good things you know she was she was telling like you know uh, how are they doing communion now now that everything is online so i i i i really as uh, where uh, really I, i'm a promoter of house churches i think really it is happening now everybody share, we we are, we are having communion every week okay we are sharing communion every week uh, even online 
Okay. So they're, they're, they're celebrating as a family, husband, wife, and, and we say like, we are, I'm also not very particular about uh, uh, taking baptism uh, uh, before uh, uh, communion. Uh, though, you know, culturally, contextually, we, we, we tell that in the Kannada church. Okay, so there, there's a culture. So you also need to understand, we also said, so the lens of culture, lens of culture. Okay, now lens of culture, and Paul says like, you know, I became a Jew to a Jew and a Greek to a Greek, then by all means that I can save some. So without losing the spirit of, say, communion, okay, spirit of the communion, that is connecting to God, celebrating the death and burial, uh, burial, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And at the same time, you know, celebrating the oneness of the body. These are the two essential things. So forms can vary. So like it, it can vary. But then you know, we, we cannot take it to you know, uh, extremes of you know, people. Uh, you know, like we can dance. You know, we can, can we not dance? Uh, you know, uh, celebrating the death of Jesus Christ. Yes, we, we can. <laughs> okay. But then See, there is a, a, a balance we bring about. There's a balance we bring about. So the pastor, that would be set in culture. Now, mine is an IT crowd, guys, young fellows. No, 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 I have a, no problem. The same thing. No, I'm from saying, 1947 culture, so I had brought up. No, no problem. What I'm saying is, no, no. you have a culture, you have a cultural setting. Okay. But even in that cultural setting, even in that cultural setting, okay, you know, there can be certain levels of decorum. In the sense, I can celebrate the Passover. You know, we do celebrate. Uh, uh, see, uh, even now online, also we take at least ten to fifteen minutes. Okay, for the communion, we give exhortation. We, uh, we we do it differently. Sometimes we tell the people to share the uh, uh, share the bread with one another. Okay. Sometimes you know, we like we, we I generally tend to get uh, try to get the families to sit together in the church also. Okay. So there are different days we can celebrate it differently. So we don't have to have and then glorify the form that you are doing. Yeah. You know, people saying high five. You know, that's a form. So we don't have to glorify it. No, okay. Not glorifying. I'm just no. saying that is the way we yeah. do it. I yeah. cannot stop my young fellow. No, no, he, right. doesn't, he doesn't give us a regular shake candy. No, I that's know that right. If there is outside or inside the church, I don't want them to be different. You know, no, that's right. you know no. that is hypocrisy. No, that is hypocrisy. Only, okay, only, right. only, only Pastor, you are muted. Pastor, you are, you are muted. I didn't mute you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See, let, let, me, let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. See, now, there is a balance. Why I'm saying, see, uh, see, Pastor Sam always brought about the balance. Okay. See, you look at different cultures, the different ways that things are done. Pastor, he had only a problem. See, like memorial service. Okay. A memorial service we conduct, right? Okay. The memorial service, we say that we are celebrating the life that man has lived. Okay, that's one of the terms we are using. We are celebrating the life that man has lived. Like Subhash has given a testimony, we are celebrating a life. So there is there is you know there is a reverence, okay. There is a there is a reverence that is attached to communion, okay. Because it is, we are but celebrating. Where, where are we talking about this reverence? I want to know what is this reverence about? What is this? We bring this solemn and reverence and things like that. See, John, uh, no, so no, that, is, that is a nice tradition. No, only, only, John, only, that's why I'm giving an example. Okay, I'm giving an example. Of that's, a not a, that is a biblical, only, not, a, not a biblical thing. You are talking about no, no, an extra no, biblical no. thing there. No, 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 no. See, it is a biblical thing. Do you think that Jesus was dancing at uh, Passover versus celebration? But, uh, I think Jesus and his disciples played soccer at the beach of Galilee. No, no, that they did not at the not at the at the Lord's Supper when he was instituting. See, that is, is, uh, Uncle, weren't they just eating food there? They were all okay. sitting together. They discussed. They actually discussed and distributed food. Why are we making so big bones about it? I, I would ask. I would ask a question. There are this uh, Canaanite Christians who come to our church. So he was asking me, "You have actually spoiled the form because uh, Jesus had bread and wine. Okay. <laughs> Why?" Why you're not serving wine? Exactly. So <laughs> and he told me that if you want, I can get nice wine from here. Yeah, stand a cue, small cue, but by the way, it has to be alcoholic because the Bible says very clearly many got drunk. Many got drunk. 
we should have actually alcoholic wine and wine alcoholic wine is more than beer so actually this is good we can compromise we can on wine and make it less and have serve beer because it is uh, less alcoholic i liked what he said we can get more people to the church yeah right? because i'm telling you sunday morning i've got a guy who drinks otherwise so he doesn't come to church because he came and asked me you know do you allow people like me in the church just imagine if i serve good wine this guy will be in the front of the queue <laughs> and probably his celebration also will be very loud and uh, <laughs> great and then then they said john was lying down that was a problem so, <laughs> so <laughs> here even sitting is a problem so john was lying on the chest of jesus i don't know i don't know about the all that no <laughs> okay. so, so the possibility is there you know ultimately <laughs> pastor sam told me you don't argue this with me i know what you are saying i understand what you are saying but for the sake of pattern for the sake yeah, of yeah, pattern yeah that's a see, see is there now you see we cannot do anything without a pattern right yeah. so every function on this every fun function has a form okay the form is flexible right yeah. but at the same time when we are saying a memorial service and this is giving an example of a memorial service so jesus christ was there at uh, 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 the last supper okay So Jesus Christ definitely would have played soccer with uh, the disciples, maybe in the Sea of Galilee and the shore of Galilee and all those kind of things. It may be true, but you see, the occasion, the occasion demanded a certain decorum. Okay, a certain atmosphere of reverence. Okay, Pastor, that is your yeah. own idea. That is your no, own no, no, idea. no, no. It's not. It's not. It is it not is your own idea, Pastor. You have no. It is not. No, 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 no. Judge, it's not my idea. No, no, it no. It is no, your no. idea. Judge. Tell me, Pastor, where you're talking about. Any of the expositions on the communion does not have any mention of any relevant. No, 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 Judge. Let me, let me tell you. No, no. You are not. You are not. See, yeah, you see. Listen. So, Pastor, according to you, what is reverence? Can you explain? No, no, no. no I don't. I don't know. Let, no, 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 Pastor. No, you are making a statement: decorum and reverence. I need to know how would you see that as a form uh, manifesting in the Sunday service in the communion time? No, I, I will. I will tell you. I will let. I will let, let you know because I want the scripture to speak for itself. Now, you said history, lens of scripture, lens of history, lens of culture. Okay. So, what the scripture is silent oh, on, we are trying to make forms, what, which I, I, I respect forms. No, if I go to when I go, Pastor, 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 when I go to Davangri, for example, I don't expect to do what I am doing here because I know no, no, the culture. No, 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 I'm not even talking about. No, 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 you're not even got got, got me anywhere here. Okay, now a husband and wife are making a covenant, right? Okay, there is a decorum. There's a there's a solemn there's a solemn thing about it. Okay, there's also celebration about it. Okay, now in the same way, see. Jesus was making a covenant. You know, he says there in Luke chapter twenty-two. He says, "With passion, I have desired to take this, take this Passover with you." Okay, there is a decorum. There is an atmosphere. What way? What yeah. way have we brought down the decorum? I'm not saying you have brought down the decorum, Judge. We have not brought down the decorum, no, Judge. I'm not saying that you have brought. Don't take it personal. See, we are discussing something. No, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm taking it very personally and discussing because I want no. us to talk. No, 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 no. You cannot. You should not do that. You should no, not. Pastor, there is no problem. I am defending no, 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 myself. No, no, no. There is no problem take, with this. Thing. No, no. You should not take it personal. Yes, we are discussing a topic in general, and with the, with the understanding of what is the lens of scripture, lens of history, and lens of culture. Yeah. Okay. So whenever God made a covenant, okay, He made a covenant with the people. Okay, there are so many covenants we see from the Old Testament. Okay, every time the covenant has always had a, 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 a sense of a reverence, a sense of solemn, a solemn reverence. Okay, now even a husband and wife, okay, they are making a covenant. Okay, so pastor, you know, in a community, one minute, judge, one minute, judge. See, that is not excluding the celebration. Okay. There is a there is a there is a there is a sense of reverence because God says this is a this is the body that is broken for you. Okay, Jesus will not be doing high five and then uh, you know. Uh, 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 if Jesus was from our uh, context, he would be doing high five. No, no, he would not. Pastor, he, that is what no, you are stuck. No, you are he would, stuck in no, 19. No, 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 Pastor, no. If Jesus was from our culture. No. He would not have a problem doing high five. That's a way someone greets in the no, culture. No, 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 no. It's not true. Okay, Pastor, that is that, okay. Wait, wait, you can that, believe like that, that. No problem. That's no. You can also believe, Jar. So what I'm trying to say, say is, see, there are certain things have got certain atmosphere of reverence. You cannot Pastor, break that. You are talking okay? about reverence in your context and culture. My context and culture, I have reverence in a different way. 
Yeah, what is the problem in that? No, my, no, boys, <laughs> my boys, I'm saying, hey, inside the church, no high fi da, only outside the church. That is called hypocrisy. No, but we George, promote, one more thing. We promote no, no, no. Yeah. George, yes. one more thing now. Don't you think you're trying to glorify... Uh, you know the hi-fi, hi-fi no, culture. No, we are brand. not. We are not. I never, we never even saw as a big deal when it was highlighted by people who were. Uh, no. we, we were. It was highlighted by people who were stuck in culture. We were. We never had any problem. We never even knew this matter unless it was brought up. No, we because never glorified it. We never because I think with it. all the discussion, one thing that's getting highlighted is. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, the way you're trying to make people greet and high five. You know, maybe Sanjay, maybe no, one no, person. No, no, see, Lema, but, we, never, uh, we others... never glorified it. We never glorified it. We never even had an issue with it. We never even bothered about it. It is the people who were stuck in culture, stuck in tradition, who highlighted no. it. Correct. Now, but also, now, but also... now, in the matter of context of discussion and study, I'm telling that this is what we did and this is what was highlighted by people who were stuck in culture and tradition. So now Correct. when, no, when no, I, so, so hmm. now one more question is now now what now when it comes to communion now will people also people like sober like say Joshua uh, you know would he also be forced to do high five like Sanjay? No, we don't believe green? in that. We don't believe in creating any uh, you know hardcore this thing about uh, any of those things. But no, then we, because because then what will happen is the culture and you know, I mean the tradition or the form in your church would be. That even no, a sober guy would not. Uh, no, no. We, uh, he, uh, Sanjay was a very sober person. He was not drunk when he did fire, I fire, right? Yeah. It is, his, it is. It is his way of greeting. In their culture. In so the will everybody culture. else be forced to be no, greeting like that? No, in a no, no, I mean, no. Nobody is forcing anybody. Can nobody I just? Forcing uh, anybody. Yeah, like my children, when we go here to the new life, they're they're not really comfortable getting up immediately after the communion and going around. They say, "Mama, can't we do it later?" I says, fine, don't get up. Instead, a friend of mine, you know, I uh, called her to come to the church here in New Life in Sarjapur. She came and, and she went back. She said, Suma, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm meeting people first time and they just come and hug me. Mm -hmm. She mentioned that. She said, I don't know them. Why should I hug them? Hugging is so personal. Whether it's a girl, you know, it's a lady, of course, who hugged and all that. She said, I'm not comfortable. You know, so I, it, it, it kind of, uh, it, but, it, so my sister, I was exactly, quite surprised yes, yes, that she yes, said yes. that. Interestingly, so many people came and told we were the only place we got hugged. Yeah, exactly. That's what. So for me, you know, so I told her, she's a very close friend of mine from the Martuma Church. We live here in the community together. We have a lot of discussions. So I told her, I love it when they do it. I feel very welcome. But she didn't take it that way. She said, you know, it was very, so it, it, it differs. So I think all these things, you know, should not be like what, uh, I don't know who said that, you know, whether everyone has to hi-fi. Maybe when a person comes in new, we can shake hands. The, the hugging can come later on as we get closer to the person. Maybe yeah, I don't But, but hi-fi is not a way to measure what is real, what is not. Hi-fi is right. a way of greeting. So we respect that greeting. No, just, so we don't force everybody to do hi-fi. We never say that. But, but no, judge, judge, see, See, now you are asking. See, the Bible says, serve the Lord with fear mm. and rejoice with trembling. Mm. Okay? Rejoice with trembling. I am quoting from Psalm 2 verse 11. Okay? okay. okay. Now, see, what, what we are trying to say, now we are saying there is a uh, uh, function, okay? And there is a form. Right? So, the form, okay, should kind of help be something, uh, something that is depicting the function, okay? Absolutely. Okay. So that's where now when a person, when the man is making a covenant with this, with a woman, okay, as a, as a matter of marriage, okay, there's a form, okay, and there's a celebration, okay, there's a celebration, there's a form, okay, but there is a form which is compatible to the function, okay. Now, in a in a in a in a, in a funeral service, okay. Again, I'm talking a funeral service, okay. There's a form, okay, that is compatible to the function, okay. Now, making a covenant, okay. Now, a man and wife is making a, a man and woman is making a covenant, okay. So there is a form which is compatible, okay, compatible to the function, okay. In the same way, the partaking of the Lord's table is basically we are celebrating the death of Jesus Christ, okay? So we celebrate it. Oh, it's good that Jesus died. Of course, it's good that Jesus died, okay? But how do we, and we, we with reverence, with thanksgiving, we celebrate, Lord, thank you for dying for us, okay? So this form has to be, okay, 
compatible with the function. Let me just come. See, don't take it as a personal thing. What I'm saying is... What is the problem in taking personal? You're not hurting me. I have no problem. No, 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 no. Don't take it personal. See, listen. Your discussion is based on what I said. So I will talk from what I said. I I brought this topic before you started talking about your example. Okay? So I'm just... No, no, no. I'm just... See, without taking this example, I'm just giving you a... I I agree with you, Pastor. No. The form uh, should be compatible with function. No. There are three, there are three things we are saying. Lens of scripture, lens of history, and lens of culture. Mm. Right. Mm. Okay. Now, history, this online service is a history. Okay. So at some point, the online service has come. Okay. Now, we are taking communion in our own homes. Right. Mm. Okay. So there's a history at, at this point of time. We are really happy about it because the families are celebrating. I always used to tell my people, why can't you, husband and wife, Take communion at home. I have taken with my wife communion many times at home. Okay, in the past. Okay, so I I, I also promoted to the church. Okay, so what I am saying is there is a communion with God and there is a communion with one another. Okay, it is it is, it is both are the essence of a communion uh, 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 function. The function of communion is to commune with God and commune with one another. Okay, so here we are celebrating the death of Jesus Christ. The way He has sacrifice for us. He has laid down his life for us. Okay. So we, ha- we, we, are, we are celebrating that by giving thanks, by giving, by being reverent before God. Thank you, Jesus, for your dying. Okay. At the same time, we are celebrating. Okay. As not Jesus died for us. Okay. Let's celebrate the Passover. Now, Paul is using that word. Let us celebrate the Passover. Okay, in Second Corinthians, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, he's using that word. So let us celebrate the Passover. Let's keep the Passover. Okay, so there's nothing wrong, but at the same time, we should be culturally relevant. Now, hugging, yes, we all you know we all can hug one another, but it need not be there in the time of communion. It can be there in the time of communion, it need not be there in the time of communion. It uh, depends, depends on yeah, depends on. So people definitely will be, people are really blessed. Okay, when 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 we you know we you know Paul is saying kiss what, uh, what is it? Greet one another with a holy kiss. No. There are, there are things where we feel we express our love through a touch or through hugging or whatever way it is. Okay. So there are places for that. But then communion, the context of a communion which we usually have, okay, when we have, we are limited with our, with our time. Okay. But so I want to make communion as meaningful as possible. You know, why I do what I do? You know, why I'm telling sometimes I tell the people who share the communion with one another. Yet yeah, Jesus also said, take it. So we understand they were sharing it with one another. Okay. So we tell, I tell the people, you know, to share the communion with one another. Sometimes I say, you share it with your family, as husband and wife, you make them to sit. Okay. So we do. But then how much of time can we use? Okay. So there can be a balance between doing it as a ritual. Okay. And doing it. Okay. And beyond that. So there is a form which is compatible to the function. Which, so I think it, you know, there, there should be a balance. So this is what probably Pastor Sam or any of us, like we are, uh, uh, who have, see now you have a culture, IT corridor built, so you may have a culture. Pastor, there is, as far as I am concerned, as far as even with Pastor Sam's discussion or with what you are saying, our form was compatible to the function very clearly. For example, after that, a little later, we decided to go one step ahead. Okay. So one of our Sundays, what we did was we kept the food ready. We would break the cup, bread in the cup and this thing. And we actually took part in a meal. Which we went one step ahead trying to, uh, you know, bring the whole meal idea back into the church. That we will have a meal together. So what we did is we broke the bread in the last. And then we had a meal together. It was a full meal. So these are all, we are not violating any, but any of this thing. Maybe because the general tradition in the church, New Life Church, has a particular thing. There can be a complication because of uh, we are moving away from the form that new life follows. New, over time, we have developed tradition. That is simple. We have done that. There's nothing wrong in it. I am not against the tradition. But for me, my certain convictions that brought me to understand that I could do something. Somebody asked me, George, will this not become a form tomorrow? Yes, it may be. It may become. I am not. I'm not denying that. But right now, we felt that we can uh, enjoy the communion more by showing an affection and love to each other. And we get up each other. Some people shake hands. Some people don't do anything. Some people come and take communion and come back and sit down. 
have different people and according to their freedom we never forced anybody to do anything in a specific way we told the bread and the cup is kept there we are not going to come and give it around you can come take part from it and come back if you want you are free to greet someone and come back and sit down also so that is how we function the other thing pastor is is, is the idea of head covering okay that will take us the rest of the journey actually no i guess i guess i want to say something about this communion party if you forget yeah. about let's forget about what we have done till yesterday let's say we all have alzheimers not a good thing to say and you forget what happened yesterday okay and then you go back and read the scripture i really challenge all of you how would we do it at that point of time because the one thing that i observe about communion when you to the moment you use the word communion uh i know it's solemn and all, all these things for a long time i didn't understand why but then i had to follow suit whatever uh but if you really look at the bible it was all always a meal it was always a meal even jesus when he broke bread he had a conversation so i see communion there the, the breaking of the bread i would rather use the word breaking of the bread was it more of a informal time than a formal so i have understood why dr george is getting into trouble because there is something called formal which everybody wants to see so do it just like in a you know wedding or a marriage the formal part is over then what we do we throw off everything and then we go and do whatever we want to do so what what i i what i have done is in our church we have a meal it's sacrosanct have a meal but the problem is at the time of the meal we rarely talk about jesus we more talk about the, you know uh, the saris and, and and you know the the new gadgets that we have bought or or that kind of conversation which is a problem because that is the basic understanding that this there is no real communion that's going exactly. on so yeah so yeah. so i keep i keep asking people like why do you want to talk about aunties and uncles after church i think we got to talk about but you can't force them to do that because that has to come from within so that is one issue second issue is you said you got to travel because of husband and wives in ministry i tell you the problem is because you call the pastor jyoti that is when the issue comes so in a paul when he wrote his letters epistles i never saw him write pastor timothy and pastor cyrus and brother john and brother joseph never because this is again another pattern that has come in so there was no address the moment you don't have any name no nobody has any issue even totally if the wife is coming the moment you give a name that is where the problem comes totally agree the, name, the pastor is the problem so try not to call names no problem no, but then pastor, that is not accepted i am i am with you on that but for yeah. me i have a different intention why i do it oh okay the you want to scandalize and create problems no no the, no 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 <laughs> if i want to scandalize no 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 the thing is i am interested to change something that's all and i am not doing it in any without taking a bulldozer you want to change it. something with, with, within your structure or other people's structure where do you want to change the generally generally in the way we look at uh, this thing we just I, say I, we just so only i would do it okay and, and trying to break the form actually right that people yeah. also has been for i have, I have, I have just one yeah. one sentence to say i just want to it's very hard to even change ourselves forget changing others <laughs> So, no, see, yeah. no, no, see here. Here's uh, Suma. You are trying to tell something. Suma, Suma, go ahead. No, but no, I was just coming to say. Sometimes you know, I don't. Uh, in my eyes, I don't see the person to be called as a pastor. But sometimes I'm forced to call because they feel very hurt if you don't use the pastor in front of their names. You know, because uh, I don't know from my experience. I'm saying that I prefer calling names and being uh, nice. But then when everyone is calling a particular person pastor and you don't call, they they are offended if you don't call. So in Doha they say PM, PG, PR, PF, PL, <laughs> PM. You know, or everything starts with a P. Pastor Santhi would be PS. You know, so. <laughs> And, and so that is here. that's again an, a, 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 what we call as a cultural thing. Okay, we have this yeah. whole thing. So I am also with. Uh, there's a time we will uh, we will strip off the word pastor completely from this thing. But right now I thought first let's get the women of back on the track, <laughs> back onto this thing. So we we are doing that part so that no, people can but, visibly understand that there is no difference between men and women. Ideally, but, I would go with what Jiju says. There is. Raja, no I am thinking of. Yeah, 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 I am thinking please. of one more thing. I'm sorry, yeah, uh, Sasindi Prank. Uh, uncle has a point. in terms of when he said about jesus christ breaking bread or the day he was betrayed he is not you know joyful and saying i am being betrayed tomorrow man and stuff like that right but yeah. it would be a very solemn thing that he is sharing there right hey guys i am going to be betrayed now and so and when we are and paul also when he starts he says you know on the night he was betrayed so he is asking us to go back to that 
point where hey think you know it's my body that is being broken i have pulled out my blood so i don't think so like the uncle said now we have, the form has to follow a function i i definitely i am very happy with the celebration but there is an amount of maybe a reverence there where we are talking about we are thinking about somebody's death yeah. somebody's so, thing and i cannot be you know yeah. laughing and all of that maybe after that i can definitely yes. so the celebration so, portion so, is always so we there. follow that we follow that we yeah, have a yeah. time where the exhortation is there people are meditating and everything we yeah, pray yeah. then when we See, take judge. the communion after the communion only we yeah, have judge, the, yeah, yeah. true to that no, is fine no, yeah. no, only in church See, you are all the time thinking about what you are doing See, leave that aside okay so, pastor, just addressing me no, only, no, 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 we are addressing me why are you having a problem in me addressing what i have to say you no 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 you should not you see because no, listen to me listen as as uh, uh, our uh, uh, dr jiju was pointing out let's uh, let's think that we all have alzimas let's forget about everything that has happened in the past okay so we are we are discussing a topic of communion okay through the lens of scripture lens of history and lens of culture correct okay okay let, let let's look at it okay it's not the history of it corridor church where george was celebrating fine that's one of the things that we can take but what what here see the thing is see even the, the now the pass see the passover meal uh, uh, having been partaken always the pass i mean the pa- passover being celebrated always with a meal okay see it it may not be really true okay i will tell you why that there are reasons why see the passover itself it did not have the passover celebration of the old testament okay it did not have one cup it had four cups okay and there was a specific form to it see every time god made a covenant there was a clear form okay there's no question every covenant was a solemn it was a solemn event okay now jesus says do this in remembrance of me okay that we are we have made a covenant with god through jesus christ now as a token of the covenant there are two things which are the token of the covenant one is the baptism which is a one time event okay and there is a covenant being renewed every time okay through the breaking of bread okay so covenant has definitely has an awesomeness a, a reverence factor to it you look at any of the covenants in the bible you, you go through the lens of scripture okay lens of scripture and passover was it is not like any other meal okay now even i'll, I'll tell you, you go and see the jewish celebration in the past historically okay and historically what they are doing today if, if they are real jews they are having on the sabbath day okay every sabbath day they have a family meal okay it is as a head of the family he is he is celebrating the rest that god has given to us given to them okay and the same person what he does on the passover meal once in a year is different okay so there is a definite form there is a different atmosphere okay there is a celebration that is because jesus has is as listen again there is a celebration so he, the, the, so what i am saying is, is we need to we need to come to an understanding so we cannot we need not follow okay the 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 the, the example that we have become a ritualistic we are somehow trying to finish out the communion throw it off so that the message can go on okay so we can come to that that kind of a ritualistic uh, setup okay and then we can go on to the other side okay like paul like like what was happening in the church, church of corinth okay every fellow was having meal and uh, yeah, getting drunk with wine and and, and uh, so there there has to be see, there has to be a form why do we have a form okay now different cultures may have a different form different kinds of forms when they get married right this culturally it is relevant to them okay now we are like even 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 uh, like even like uh, our our marriages our marriages are conducted okay in the in a western culture we are still holding on to the western culture okay in terms of conducting our marriages okay we are we are throwing away like we have a best man we have this we have that we need a, 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 a people are, a people have to walk in this way okay so that's a culture you see the lens of sculpt culture okay and the lens of history okay so there are many aspects okay which can be which can be thought about but but communion has got more of a scriptural uh, basis where it is a covenant that was made so we celebrate it with reverence and with fear at the same time we celebrate it okay first okay. i am with you yeah. yeah so so the form the form you know just because we want to change now 
I'm, I'm definitely against the culture of uh, uh, culture and the form which people have where, where, where communists are considered to be a something that you get over with. Okay, we need to break that. We have broken that. Even women's ministry, see George, probably don't address me. Don't address me. Don't address me. Because uh, you'll have to problem address, again. Okay, I'll have to come with you. I don't address me, Pastor. No, 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 here, because, no, no Pastor, okay. please don't address me. If you address me, then I will speak and then again you get offended. I don't no, 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 not like that. So listen, don't address me. You, the you communion as a whole. See the why we have because a lot of senior pastors and trustees are there. John is there, Joseph is there. So many people are representing. So I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. Uh, and people from various cultures, like Kerala culture is very different. You know, most of the people come from a traditional Pentecostal background, also from the nominal background. Pentecostal. So what I'm saying is, so the communion has a context. It is a covenant making. Thing. The same way, like women ministry. Now we are calling calling them as pastor or anything. Okay. Now Pastor Jyoti. Now as you are telling, calling calling a person as a pastor creates a problem. Okay. Now. In my own experience, okay, I am one of the first persons, at least in New Life Karnataka, okay, way back in 1993, okay, 93, 94, I got people to preach from the pulpit, okay. Even, even I came to, I, I came to UTC, I was there for two years, okay. The first time, got the people to come to the stage, UTC stage, I pushed the people onto the stage to lead worship. It was in 2005, okay, when I came came there, and for the first time, I got a, a woman to lead worship, okay, from the pulpit, okay, as as uh, as Jiju was saying, yeah, they they are, they are all involved in the ministry. But you want to call them pastor, you don't want to call them pastor, but you should call them pastor. It doesn't matter. They have been functioning, okay. They have been functioning, okay. What kind of a form? The form is, yeah, they are allowed to preach, they are allowed to lead worship, they are allowed to lay hands and pray. Okay. Now, next question you will ask me is, have you allowed the woman to baptize people? Okay. So far, we are not. Okay. We did. So far, we did. We did. Yeah, you did. I, I got trash for it. <laughs> yeah, trash for it. So, listen, see, see, there are certain, listen, see, see, so how do you bring the change in the cultural context? Okay. The lens of culture is there, lens of, lens of history also is there. And then Paul says, I become all things to all men, that by all means that I can save some. Okay. So when we are discussing these things, there's a balance. Okay. There's a balance that we need to bring about. Okay. Instead of becoming a Jew to a Jew, and he, he goes and uh, you know, uh, baptizes one guy, uh, circumcises one fellow. You know, in the book of Acts, we see Paul, Paul was doing that. Okay. Now, it was right or wrong. He was, he was afraid of the Jews. He did it. There are so many, there are so many different uh, uh, things that we can argue. So there has to be a balance. There has to, God will give us wisdom to bring about a balance. Okay, in be, be it communion or be it women in the ministry. Yes, women are there in the ministry. They are preaching. They are they are teaching. They are, uh, most of my 1993, most of my first case leaders were all women. Okay, they were they were leading the whole group. Okay. So those things are there, okay. So they, God can give us wisdom in balancing about all these things and and uh, and bringing something relevant to our. Yes, forms are not fixed, right? Forms are not fixed. Okay, the structures, structures should not lead us to a ritual. You know, it should it should lead us to the function. You know, you know why we do what we do. Yes. Uh, why we do what we do. We have a philosophy of ministry, okay. So. So that, that that's a that's a philosophy of ministry that you know, we, are, we are trying to talk about. Why do we, why do we do what we do? Okay. Yes, George. Yes. Anybody else would like to comment? Any pastors? Uh, Pastor Joseph, you'd like to share, please. Put in, Pastor. Pastor. Can, can I put in some idea? You know. Uh, oh, please. Uh, we, we, we want everybody to contribute. Yes. Yeah. Thing is, I feel that you know, these these things are you know it's actually a very very sensitive topic. Because because we are so much caught up with the culture and uh, so much talk, caught up with tradition that it's difficult to change certain things. Especially, you know, we had a Jewish uh, man coming in, you know, talking about Lord Supper. So what he said was the Jews had a culture of reclining with their, ha with their legs up on the bench when they ate. So that's why you know the 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 the, the feet has to be the, the feet had to be washed because they they had actually had the 
the, they, they used to have they used to have long benches. They used to sit in a square table and they used to have long benches where it was actually meant for reclining. Mm -hmm. They used to have cushions where they used to recline. Reclining is not sitting straight. Reclining is actually what he said. He explained the whole thing, how the Jews do it, because he was a Jew. He said reclining means actually leaning on to the, the whole thing, like you know, like a like a like a kingly posture where you put your uh, pillow and then you know you sit and you are close to the the other man's you know the other man's leg actually so they had to you know the, the feet washing was a norm in the jewish culture so you know in this culture you know you can see where you know in the, the where jesus had the communion you can see this man that is john moving closer to jesus bosom which means that he crossed over from the leg to the to the bosom and asking, looking up, asking him, Jesus, who is that? Who is, who is it going to betray? Is it, you know, is it me or something? You know, he is so close to Jesus' chest. So there is actually so, so much of informality in the whole, uh, and he was explaining the whole thing. The Jew, Jewish man was explaining how they eat and all that. And as Pastor uh, Sedjapan said, you know, it's not just one cup. There are three or four cups that, that are there. There are herbs that are there. There are, you know, lamps, uh, with a roasted lamp. Is there. So many things that are there. So he was talking about each and every piece of uh, item that is there and everything has got a meaning. But in today's scenario, as Pastor uh, George says, you know, we need to, uh, the whole thing is you know, how we look up the whole, look at the whole thing. Uh, rather than, you know, um, the, the attitude is more important than the, the as uh, Pastor George put in there. Does all these things give security for us or does God give us security? This is the question. So it's not a question of whether you have high five, whether you have columnists. So where you have solemn function or, you know, I feel that the whole thing is, you know, let it, let the people do it. Like in China, they cry and take the communion. Whereas in Africa, they dance and take the communion. So it's all, each culture has different ways of doing it. So God does not bother. God, God is only bothered about our attitude. What attitude we are taking. Is there, you, know, you know, an attitude of, you know, worshipping the Lord. You can worship the Lord in dancing also. You can worship the Lord as in solemnness also. You can be quiet and worship the Lord. You can be quiet and then worship the Lord. So there are all these things that are very subjective and, you know, you can decide what you want, but at the same time, your, what your, how your mind is put up, you know, how you are to this. This is what God is looking This is what I want to say. Thank you, Pastor. Anybody else would like to comment? Yeah, one question that I want to ask, George. Yeah. Uh, in your communion, do you use uh, pan or uh, you use unleavened bread? Um, currently in communion with uh, online, I sometimes at the, at the nick of time, I have a chapati and uh, fruity or sometimes I have drunk water also. Uh, I've not got an original grape juice at many times because of lockdown and issues. But uh, yes, when I do try to buy a grape juice, my wife actually tells me, hey, you are the fellow that talks about all these uh, breaking the ritual. Why are you dying to buy this grape juice? <laughs> anyway, that is, yeah. the, uh, so that is the, actually... So we that use is, we, you use regular uh, bread, yeah. So we are using uh, only, um, I mean, instead of uh, uh, unleavened bread, we use a leavened bread. So mm. thing is that many things that we have actually brought down over centuries or maybe over years together, maybe may not be the re real way in which the Jewish people, as just just as Joseph said right now, may not be the rate, uh, same way we do it. We have actually formed our own patterns of things. And that has become a norm now. You know, when the when the uh, what what is it? Uh, Zoom has come in. We well, this is the way we do it. We call all the people together. We uh, ask them to prepare. I mean, keep ready bread and uh, whatever juice, not wine or anything. You don't have any uh, uh, grape juice at people's home. We ask them to keep some juice, and then uh, we break it. Uh, the Basic thing is the attitude that you have regarding the reverence also. Is, I don't say that it should not be there. It has to be there in a, uh, certain things because we found, found, found that actually two people uh, brought to death in the tent of Moses when uh, they were having uh, a worship going on. Maybe the uh, unsacred or maybe not so sacred fire that they brought caused them to die. So there is actually some sort of reverence also that we need to have. Uh, which I believe that uh, there is a time for celebration. There is a time of jumping and dancing and all those things. There is also time of seriousness. So a balanced thing would be always uh, good, I feel. Uh, because uh, 
uh, many a times people certain certain times think that uh, god is a jovial god and keeping on uh, doing all sorts of things which may not be the right thing at many many a times so we have to be sensitive uh, when the spirit wants or the holy spirit wants us to be serious and uh, reverence reverential fear has to be there at times and uh, everything has to be done in order that's all i just uh, feel that's the only thing so that last not thing against, you made yeah your last statement you said is very nice because that's how you that's the word paul also uses everything has to be in order because yeah. uh, many a times what happens is that when there is no order confusion starts keep uh, keeping uh, creeping in and people also tend to uh, go in their own ways understanding that christian life is all about jumping and joy and all those things but seriousness uh, also fail to uh, come in uh, in our our own lives and things like that so basically yeah, totally balance, totally agree with you pastor balance would be better yeah i'm not against jumping and dancing because we also want to have a lot of jumping and dancing when the uh, worship goes on i don't want to people just to be quiet and uh, maybe serious mood when there is celebration or maybe when we start praising god that time uh, definitely we would like to have some uh, celebration really expressing mm-hmm. itself uh, in the in your emotions and all those things are so important Yeah. one disclaimer one disclaimer because many people are suggesting that we are not jumping and dancing okay joshua is here suma is here we don't do any of those things ours is a very reverential time okay where in during the time of worship during our uh, communion i'm talking about uh, this is not like yeah. we don't yeah yeah we have a very solemn time actually why pastor said i'm just for argument sake i pulled push it beyond the <laughs> <earlier, so. laughs> see i i jump and dance the most in my church george praise god pastor. at the same time i also uh kneel down many times so that's a that's a so the amount of, the, the kind of freedom that we give people to experience different things at different times i totally agree with you I, and i enjoy that for with new life you know that we so i would ask uh, is your george what another question i would ask is when yeah, uh, when the when the, maybe the worship is going on yeah do we expect all of the people to stand together and worship god or we don't, yeah or some people sitting and maybe casually whatever it is i just want to, i just want to ask my my personal thing and the way i would look at it is as a pastor of my church i give everybody to uh, everybody to uh, worship the way they feel comfortable okay like uh, some people now they be new and you cannot just ask them to fo- jump and dance and things like that we exhort maybe the church to worship but we also respect a person who is wanting to sit and worship or stand and worship or kneel and worship or cry and worship we can't force these things we can't yeah. force new life has yeah. a Yeah. Pastor, let me tell you something. When I first came to New Life in 1991, the kind of dance and worship that was there to what we are today, we have become nominal. Yeah, correct. It is. I mean, I remember in Hotel President in Mangalore, I walked in, and I'm from a traditional Marthamite background. I was shocked. I didn't get offended. I was definitely kind of finding it very oh, difficult to, to take it, but I knew there was joy in that. Let's say the way people danced was amazing, and which I feel uh, I took about three, four years before I could start dancing. then eventually i noticed that dance went out of me because i became probably become heavier and i could shake the world if i jump and dance but uh, i noticed new life generally has moved away from uh, this thing we have become just like any traditional marthama church we have in marthama church it is a military style there is a standing up sitting down standing up sitting down now new life has become just like that okay. we have taken on that form very clearly okay. that we know when to start when to stop we know the sequence very well see again when we are coming together uh, for a uh, maybe for a celebration is it is it not important that we need to have a unity among ourselves see i can actually sit and dance and do whatever have uh, my in my own personal time i can have the way i want but when i come to a congregation should i shouldn't i uh, be together as uh, uh, in unity with all the people that together actually t- doing certain things i'm just putting some points across yeah, pastor see, we can encourage and we can exhort but we can't control that's all no, i know there's no control see, we can see, exhort no. we we exhort people to worship and dance and things like that see, but we don't force but we don't come all in the same same mode every time right sometimes you know i come maybe i'm happy sometimes i'm sad when i am comes uh, coming sad you can't explain to dance at point of time i am thinking contemplating so i think it's all very subjective also we don't force again. everybody we don't force everybody to take communion yeah that is true we don't force everybody to take communion so so in that context when we have communion at home is it okay to even the children take part because if, if you are talking about a meal when somebody comes to meal we don't tell children don't eat right so i don't uh, stop my children from when i break bread i give to my children 
i don't even look at they all i don't even care about that you know because uh, somebody would be announcing their children you know i think i feel that is okay and all that but then i think it's a child and she is part of you know the children are part of my family the past was happening it was given like this pastor i had issue same issue i had one family from africa had come uh they had come and actually in fact they also joined with me in uh, uh in the communion so he came with his family uh, maybe so happy along with the size son also so he told me give my give the community to my son also <laughs> for a moment i said how can i give the community to son he is not even actually understanding what uh, communion is all about but then i understood maybe that is a culture from he is coming and i did not deny i said okay take it you, you i told the father sir you give it to them i told him i didn't give it i told the father you give so that is a with the culture that they are coming from and i didn't want to deny uh, saying that oh that church fellow when i came to that uh, church that pastor did not uh, uh, give uh, community to my son so i said so this is not the, after after the service i called him aside and said maybe this is not the culture that we follow here so whatever you culture you have we are no i'm not against it you have it your way but thing is that again that is actually cause sudden uh, maybe bickering and murmuring in the church also oh, after yes, some yes. time i had the same problem we have very tough time with that yes anybody else would like to but share functionally what is right in terms of when people come together in the, in the in the old testament sorry in the in the early church i think the children were part of the church right so would they be excluded from the from the food that they were eating because they were not baptized or they did not believe in jesus christ uh if see, it was a meal see, see, this is what how i understood it uh, we don't see any exclusive order directive by paul yeah. not ever serve it to uh, stay but i think this is a good way to share the gospel with our children right every sunday as we partake now how do i share imagine if i'm going with our current tradition okay uh the lord jesus died on the cross this body which is broken and i explained this and explained the cross then i say the new covenant the cup then don't give it to them <laughs> how does that sound <laughs> all this is right but don't give it to them <laughs> so you know we are declaring that christ is coming back we are declaring the gospel as we take part in it so to me i see that you know this is the best opportunity every week without a failure we can share the gospel with our children But then again, the problem is actually many sleep uh, because they have taken the Lord's body without discerning. That is also another passage that actually. No. Yeah. Let 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 me also add one more thing, George. Like in the same context that you said about giving to children. Now in our context, in 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 other churches that we we you know we have here, you know they all all are non-Christians. We have a lot of non-Christians coming, and for yeah. them, when a non-Christian goes to a temple, the 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 purpose is to have darshan and take prasadam. Mm-hmm. so when he comes to a church mm-hmm. there is a believer or a baptized or that's all secondary he's come to church to have darshan and he wants to take the prasadam mm-hmm. so will you give him because everybody because you're serving to everybody you will give him, you will uh, will you share out for talking about the cross will you give him that so he, because we will take uh, it in the context uh, of taking a prasadam uh, and go yeah pastor what i would do okay i'm not saying in your context in your cultural context there may be constraints in my cultural context and where i am placed and maybe if i was in your place i would not restrict anybody from taking part in the brother account because it's a meal i'm invited him so it's like this we in, how did he come to church he didn't walk into church because you know he saw the glory of god shine lighting on the oh there's something happening here he came because somebody invited and i have seen literally that this is only discussion we are in an r&d place okay none of these things will apply to what we do in our church we are all free to do so, i'm just so i'm just saying the, let me so the so person so taking the, so, so the, the person yeah. taking mm. yeah so let me explain so this is how i see it you invite somebody to church okay and then we talk about a meal and then we i have seen literally pastors going and holding the hand don't take part from this pulling out the thing from the hands of the unbeliever and taking it away so the isn't it ironical that we invite somebody and don't give them the part of the meal that's my thought i'm just leaving it at that yeah I, i after charles uh, i think uh, what is that is right uh, because you can explain before uh, you do the communion this is, this is not like the prasad i mean a guy who is taking prasadam comes you can tell him this is not like the prasadam this is actually remembering the lord jesus and uh, you can you can ask him before you you know give him the communion that we are going to remember you can even speak be briefly about the covenant you can take, give a small uh, exhortation about what jesus did on the cross of calvary and then ask him to meditate on that and then give 
I don't think uh, there is a problem in that. So, Pastor, we all we announce all these things. We initially, we used to announce baptism also. Some churches are given the freedom. Some churches in your, our under my care still announce baptism. Some people in some churches, we depending on the exhorter, they announce that. We don't even stop that also. And uh, we tell, uh, but every Sunday we don't tell this is prasadam. Don't this is not prasadam and all those things. We can't tell that. We are uh, telling them that we are taking part. This is something that was instituted by the Lord Jesus. We are doing this as a memorial thing. We are taking part in the thing. We, this is a time where we remember what Jesus did. We declare the gospel very clearly at that time, and then we serve. Of the other thing, we don't see then who takes and who not takes. We have given the sufficient instructions. We don't stop anybody because it is not. I don't. I think it's ironically you invite somebody and then say, uh, please don't take part in the meal. That's what I believe, and we understand from cultural constraints are there in the whole uh, issue. No, so we, just so my only my only thing is now yeah. you're focusing highlighting a communion as a meal. I mean, mm -hmm. it's more than a meal. Why yes. are you highlighting communion? Because see now the, the questions that we are having, the discussions well, we are well, having. Well, Pastor Lemo, what is it more than a meal? Tell me. No, so so I uh, my question is: Are we only looking at it as a meal? For me, it is a meal with a meaning, and the ah, meaning was the exactly. meaning was the so meaning when, was so given so by. You're, mm, mm, correct. So yeah. when you are trying to focus, you see, on all of our discussions today, I personally felt that we are, we are focusing more on a form and trying to change it or revolutionize it, whatever. Yeah. You know, I think it, it has to come from the meaning and understanding. We Correct. have to focus more on the meaning and understanding, so, and then leave it pass, to people. Pass, pass, how... The more we go to the meaning, the more we will let go of these uh, challenges. The meaning is what that we are declaring the gospel when we take part in the thing. Correct? Yeah. We are declaring the gospel, and then if you go in that direction, everything else will fade away, because we want everybody to have the gospel. Should I restrict anybody from having the gospel? We, I, I would not agree with you because we are not just de de declaring the gospel. We are also declaring that we are in Christ. We are all one. Mm -hmm. That's that's a core crux of this whole thing. Meaning, it, it that is why we are talking about our connection with God as well as our fellow believers. Absolutely. The problem is, in spite of all the solemnness and everything, we have lost that part. Mm -hmm. Because you oh. can have you can have two people fighting in church, and that's still true. being very solemn when they take communion. Correct. So that so that that is going to be a serious issue. So, that so pastor, if you consolidate everything together, first and primarily the communion is a gospel preaching because that's what Paul says. Also, we declare, okay, one. Second is that we are having fellowship with God and fellowship with each other. Third is that in the context of this fellowship, we have a remembrance of what Jesus did on the cross, so that we are encouraged and motivated in the whole thing. We are a community. Okay, so uh, those are the essences of all this. We have true fellowship. This is we are also fellowship. proclaiming that Jesus is coming back for all exactly. of us. Yes, yes, Pastor, that's part of the gospel. Recognizing the body of Christ. So when we say non-believers are going to be there, and we because the verse says that for anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord, eats and drinks judgment. Okay. So in that Pastor, case, Pastor, if, Pastor, if you read, to, yeah. So there also we have to understand there are two schools of thought. There are two schools of thought in that recognizing the body. The issue that Paul was addressing was not to unbelievers. The issue that Paul was addressing was to believers. What was the issue in the believers in the Corinthian church that he was addressing? It was not, they were not in unity. They were not in unity. And yes, he's saying you're coming together and having as one. So the communion should bring you together. That's exactly what Pastor Jiju said. That you are, you you know, you cannot be separated. That's why we, many of us don't take part sometimes because we not feel right with God. Or whatever the reasons that we have, reasons why we don't take part. But actually, it should come to a place that communion. You will take part because you come to a point of repentance. If you have not repented during the week, we actually feel a place. Oh God, at your uh, uh, at the foot of your cross, as I remember you, I, I don't want to hold anything to my heart. So uh, that uh, the issue of examining your heart, recognizing the body, the body as one, is this. Thing. I have a idea. Then never invite an unbeliever to church because it's only for believers. No, but actually you're true, right? No, actually what saying is right, right? Because the gospel would be preached, people would believe, baptized, and then they add to the church. Correct. So, if you but, were, so, so correct. in so, that correct. context, I think that is a gathering where we are taking that, we come in and it should be in the context of people who believe yeah. in Jesus. So we should not invite believer, unbelievers to church. Am I correct, Sidney? So if that is the case, then my children cannot even sit when I'm actually. Yeah. Okay. So John, let me, bring about, okay. Let, let me let me bring out one more point. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Today, today we're talking about children, and you know, can we give to children? Now I'm telling you, maybe in another few days, maybe it may start with your IT corridor only. You know, let's talk about pets. Today, mm -hmm. people don't consider pets as an animal; they consider mm -hmm. as a family member and uh, mm -hmm. as, as a child. 
mm. you know who who eats um, their their food from their own meal mm. so when uh, so when when their dog comes to the church mm. will you serve communion because he what says a, it's a you... very radical thought we haven't thought about <laughs> it no 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 just 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 one minute let, let me just see what point that lemurs brought out is very very important and very very relevant mm. see the communion is not a fellowship meal first of all we need to get that thought out of it out of our mind i totally disagree with you pastor no, no, i minute. understand i respect no, that no, just, let, let me let me complete my line of thinking that i am sure okay many are not speaking forth okay but communion as instituted by the lord and as uh, uh, as uh, as uh, propagated by apostle paul okay it is not a fellowship meal okay it is not a fellowship meal at all okay see they are now baptism it is a token see there are only three things that are token in the new testament okay one is baptism other one is uh, breaking of bread okay and third one we will not talk about it this a part of dispute but what i'm saying is my pastor uh, please tell dispute that is what we like we are discussing here <laughs> it is not a club judge so we need to <laughs> we'll take it up next week what i'm saying no no see first of all uh, uh, we totally disagree because this that is not the essence of the scripture the essence of the scripture is communion is not a fellowship meal okay it is to remember that his body was broken and his blood was shed that's why we are taking those two things okay we are not having a pizzas and uh, uh, piz- uh, p- 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 uh, eating pizzas or or uh, uh, biryani or uh, or whatever kichdi okay for communion okay communion is to commemorate okay to the body that was broken and the blood that was shed okay so it is not a fellowship meal now Uh, most of the discussions that we have had today is that we are all saying that we are having a, f- a celebration we are having a full no it is not see communion is to commemorate okay? i agree with that with you only, only, yeah, let, let me complete it in the same way baptism okay mm-hmm. baptism that also they explained there in in, in this readings they explained about baptism also okay it's a form right mm-hmm. it's a form with a meaning okay then though though it's, it, it does not say that it, it, nowhere nowhere is mentioned that you should be immersed for taking baptism immersion baptism is mentioned the same book only this three articles we are reading we are, we are reading there okay but it was always done by immersion at least as they have explained okay for a specific purpose okay In the same way communion george communion is got a specific purpose it is not a fellowship meal it is to commemorate the bread uh, the body that was broken so passover also so they say the fellowship meal they have every sabbath they have a fellowship meal okay but the passover sabbath passover meal was different because they were commemorating okay the the lamb that was slain and the blood of the blood was put on the door post and also they were taking unleavened bread okay the feast of unleavened bread was there okay now so paul is also saying let us celebrate our passover let us keep our passover with the unleavened bread of uh, uh, sincerity and truthfulness okay so this passover has a, i mean the communion has got specific things it is not a fellowship meal i'm not inviting my inviting the people to church and uh, I, i'm eating and i'm not giving them to eat okay so pastor can i ask you something do you uh, stop unbelievers from taking no no, no let, let, do you stop unbelievers from taking one minute, one minute listen listen i don't i don't okay listen to me kids i don't do it one minute listen listen to me kids what we do because unbelievers also come to church now whether unbelievers should come to church or not come to church they come they come okay i don't know whether he is a believer or not okay he has come to the church okay so that's why we take enough time to explain okay this almost every every uh, every communion we explain this and we tell the people where i am exhorting as somebody else is exhorting so we tell them see this these are tokens okay these are tokens we are not again we are not going to the catholic system of uh, you know dance substantiation and things like that right but these are tokens okay which are definitely partaken of not as a meal okay it is partaken as a memory of the body that was broken and of the blood that was shed correct right so i i communicate this in the church and i tell them okay so even if you don't partake this is you are not partaking you know, as a matter of blessing as a matter of prasadam okay i tell this very clearly almost in every kannada service 
English service may be slightly different. Okay. Correct. Cultural difference, Pastor. That's all. Yeah, cultural difference. No, not because, all the, That's all. no, the level of understanding. The yeah, level of exactly. understanding. A guy who's intellectual, he will he'll understand. Okay? Exactly. Exactly. The so people are not coming to take it as a prasadam. Okay. So the so we tell them, even if you don't partake, I take enough time to share the gospel in the communion time. Any one of our any one of our people will take enough time to briefly share the gospel and tell them. So even if you don't partake. You can sing the song along with us. You can still have communion with God. Yes. Okay. That's what we say. We don't force anybody to take up. We don't yeah, stop exactly. anybody from taking. Exactly, Pastor. Okay. I am with you on that. No, I am with you on that. Yeah. But but the point that Lemu has brought about, okay, is very crucially important. What okay. is that, William, Pastor Lemu brought it about? It is not a meal. It is not a fellowship meal. Pastor, that is what you are saying. Um, Pastor, very well we know. It yeah. was it was a meal in the first century. No, judge, it was not a meal. See, it meal was, was a meal. Pastor. It was a meal. One minute, one minute. And it judge. was it yeah. was no, 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 that it meal is, was no, that meal was used as a token it, during the church service. No. They were used it, uh, it was, elements as this thing. It was so, not. Yeah. It was not. I'm telling Pastor, you, Pastor, that's not Pastor, problem. Can I, can I, yeah. just just think, because Paul tells them, he tells them that you all eat at home and come. Yeah. He tells them you eat at home and come. This no, no, come sister, here and sister, fight sister, over sister, the food. If you're hungry, eat at home. He says, if you are oh, hungry and you can't wait and yeah. control yourself, you eat at home. So it's not. Otherwise, it is a full meal. Full meal. But don't fight over the food. He says, you know. Exactly, so but that wonder. doesn't mean he's stopping them from having a meal, there, right? Yeah, it's it's actually, it was a meal, but we are not highlighting it as a meal. I'm just saying. It is a token remembrance. We are definitely believing well, that. We are not disagreeing with that. I totally agree with. Yeah, uh, just one more, one more point. Let, let yeah, me yeah, just yeah. give one more point. Just one more point. Okay. John chapter thirteen. Okay. How does it start? Okay. You just read John chapter thirteen. How does it start? Okay. Then you will know whether it is a meal or it is something different. Okay. It is. It is not a meal. Okay. Verse two. Uh, uh, verse two. When we, verse two. Let me just finish. It. Verse two. Thirteenth chapter. Verse two. After supper being ended, okay, the meal was over. Okay, the Passover meal of the Old Testament was over. Okay, the meal was over after supper being ended. Okay, then Jesus is moving into this particular as uh, aspect of. You know, breaking the bread and giving to them as a token. So, Old Testament also they did the same thing. Okay, it was not to have a fellowship meal. Okay, it was to commemorate the body that was broken and the blood that was shed. And also in the Old Testament, it was there to commemorate the lamb that was killed and put on the doorpost. Okay, agree, meal is always there, so you can you can do it. That's what I'm trying to say is, fellowship meal is not a must. For us to take communion, I absolutely yeah. Agree. So th therefore, so therefore, let us only talk about communion. Let's not talk about the fellowship meal. Okay, but inviting I'm, somebody I'm, for a meal and we are not giving them food. No, but not what true. I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is, it's, it's whatever we are talking about. What do we call it? Do we call it Lord Supper? You have to change it then. Lord Supper. No, we have to change the word. Did you say Lord the Supper? Lord Supper, Pastor, in your service. Hmm? You say Lord. By the way, I'm just stretching all these things a little bit too much for our learning part. Okay, I may be more conservative than you think, but <laughs> no, Pastor. Do you use the word Lord Supper in the church? Lord's table. You use the Lord's table. Table means what, Pastor? <laughs> no, George. See, my question is table is a place. Yeah. Pastor, my, do you use my, the word? My, uh, see, see, my yeah. question is. No, Lemu, we are all stuck with the formally, right? That yeah, is a problem with all of us, correct? No, correct. I, I totally structure. respect uh, in your context what you do. I'm not arguing it. I'm just thinking, no, no, you know, see, for the article point of view, I'm making you all exactly. Think. So right. today, today you're talking about unbelievers and children. I'm telling you, tomorrow I think IT corridor churches will be the first church where you'll have to have allow pets to come to the church. Yeah, so uh, Limo, uh, I, have, uh, Limo, having... Limo, I have a problem there. I have a problem with that theology of yours. Why we wouldn't uh, give communion to the uh, pets is we will not preach gospel to the pets. No, that's what you're saying. That's, that's no, that's it. what you're saying. You say, like, like community. the question that you ask me is, we, 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 if you allow a believer, no, if you if you, you ask me the question, is if you, we, will if you invite an unbeliever to the church, mm. the more the unbeliever will come with his dog, because for him, right. see today, today, today people's values are changing. Today, today there are people. I have friends who don't want to have children, but Correct. they have pets. Correct. Today so, there are restaurants uh, that allow. So, uh, my my uh, problem with uh, giving communion to the dog would be that. 
uh, I cannot preach the gospel to the dog. One. Second, if the dog comes and eats the communion table after the service, I won't stop it. No, not after the table. I mean, today mm. there are people who carry dogs with you know, to the restaurant. No, so, suppose, so when suppose, you're serving, no, suppose when you're serving, having, serving suppose, the, yeah, suppose the so communion, when you're serving uh, communion, like you said, no, no, like mm. you said, if yeah. an unbeliever goes and takes it, takes the communion while you're being served, you will you go and stop his hand? I want to stop. It. That's all. Are you will you, all, will, will you stop it? Ah, so tomorrow, so tomorrow, that's what I'm saying. Tomorrow, tomorrow, a person with this dog is coming to the church, and while he takes, he gives it to the dog also. What will you do? I, I want. But he it. doesn't Honestly, believe in the first place, right? I don't believe. He doesn't, he doesn't believe. I don't have a problem if he serves it to the dog. I am not morally accountable for it because I have already announced what it is. Yeah. So, so then, so that, that that's what I'm saying. You know, all these questions. You know, we are highlighting more on the form giving children. So that is a discussion. Think, Our topic limo today is about that. You understand. Our idea yeah. is to think through the forms, and I am talking that which is relevant to our context. I am not saying that everything I am did said is correct. I am not saying that, but I want us to think through the. I stretched a little bit, I know, but the reason being, we need to rethink our forms, or we need to think at least ours are forms. These are not uh, normatives. These are not uh, principles. These are not uh, what we call in uh, what does this guy call it? I forgot his uh, normative, and here he calls it as uh, um, Suma. What does he call it as? What is his uh, absolute, absolute and non-absolute? Absolute. It's not an absolute. So I'm just working on the idea and making you all think what is absolute and what is not absolute. But I understand uh, each of us carry sentiments, patterns, and forms which give us security or which we feel comfortable in our context. I understand when we are looking at a village setting how the people can come to the service. So you modify and you modify your forms and patterns in such a way that uh, it will uh, help best help your situation. I totally agree with that. But we are I coming to a situation. We are coming to a situation where we are uh, changing the form and throwing away the function itself. Okay. Uh, that, uh, we don't agree with that, Pastor. We no, don't, because uh, we, George, we don't say five. We no, don't, communion, communion has been instituted not as a fellowship meal. Let us get over Pastor, it. Pastor, we are not saying that is the primary oh. view. Our primary view, for all of you who are attending in our my context, we always declare the gospel. Okay, but we show it as not a funeral service. We show it as a fellowship. Okay? Yeah. Wait, yeah. Pastor, that's our view. What our view? Yeah. No, okay. no, no. We, we show it as a fellowship. Yeah. And we say that when the first century church took it, it is in the context of a meal. It was a fellowship. Jesus always had a meal with his people. So it is a meal. Meal was always in the context of fellowship. We believe as a church that this gospel that Jesus is, 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 is experienced right now here in our community as a meal and we enjoy it as being together and participating in it. That's how we put it. So what you're saying is the form is a meal, right? The function is the communion. The function is the kind of, but the form is a meal. What is wrong in that? There's nothing wrong with the meal. There's nothing wrong with the meal. But what has happened is now we are so much focusing on the form, okay? We have forgotten the function. But the function. Not, no, we are keeping the yeah, function. So much, keeping so, the much function. so, no, so much so. Okay, we are not even talking about. You see, even we, see the the declaring declaring the coming of the Lord. Okay, now it's that's what Paul is writing. Okay, mm. and he's also writing in the context of believers. Mm. Okay, the unbelievers coming to the church is happening today, mm. right? Mm. But basically. This, no, but it, it was only, happening at that time also. It was happening at that time also. Yeah, it was coming. They, they were coming. Says, he was saying yeah, very clearly. I know yeah. Yeah, what I'm saying is yeah, they were coming. Okay, it's not that they were not coming. First Corinthians 14 chapter also say when unbeliever comes, he has to prophecy. Or he has to, all those things are there. But I'm trying, but what I'm trying to say is see the communion is to commemorate. It is it is a it is a it is a renewing of the covenant. First and foremost, it is a renewing of the covenant with God. Okay. But that is a function. Be. The function of the communion is that first. Yeah. We are not preaching That's the gospel. Right. Preaching the gospel is later. Okay. Hmm. Preaching the gospel is later. But, but so basically say, it is a when you when you when you show the function, when you declare the function of the communion, when we talk about the broken body and the covenant, that is the gospel. That's hey, George, nobody's judge again and see we are again and going to the form. You see, listen. Pastor, yes, what I'm saying is, we are function is very clear. We have to remember the Lord Jesus' death and burial and resurrection on this. Is uh, we are all we are no, not that, changing that. We always minute, hold on. That's that's what I'm saying. So let us focus on the primary purpose of renewing our covenant with God. Okay, yes, that Pastor. is the, that's yes. why these as tokens we are taking this. These are just tokens we are taking this. 
Pastor, okay. there is no problem. I, we are, we are yeah. all. Pastor, what is the common ground we have? You are declaring it as uh, renewal of the covenant where Jesus died. We do the same thing. Okay, we are not. Uh, we are very clear that the gospel has to be preached. This is uh, is an opportunity to declare the gospel. It's a declare opportunity for the church to continue to remember uh, what Jesus did on the cross. We are not this, this, uh, against that, or we are. We are very much that is our first focus. So the primary aspect of communion is for ourselves, for the body of Christ. It's not. It's not for declaring the gospel to unbelievers. Okay. Pastor, the primary Pastor, purpose. Primary Pastor. purpose is when when we who are the redeemed of the Lord, we are coming together. We are one body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we understand that we are united together to the Lord and to one another. Mm -hmm. So we are partaking of the communion. Yes. So unbelievers coming into the picture is. Pastor, I'm telling you what is happening in the first century and currently. There were unbelievers coming. Can you deny that fact? No, you cannot. So how you deal with that? Different people do it differently. Now, I don't agree with somebody being going and stopping somebody, pulling it out of that. I am not saying. I have already declared what it is. Now what it takes it as his own consequence. You understand what I'm saying? So we are in, I am in agreement with you and with Lemu to the idea that the primary function of the communion is to... Uh, declare what Jesus did on the cross that the church would be reminded and I believe with an unbeliever in there it is an opportunity to share the gospel that's all we are we are on common town a uh, common ground I, do, I don't think we are different we are talking the same thing okay now in order to bring this argument and the conversation and the forms outside I was never talking about function I talked about forms in the forms we had a lot of differences and I, the, the beauty of it all is it has served a purpose See how forms divide us. Can you see? How forms divide us. Forms is the problem where we all are divided. But what we all try to work towards is to understand are we all common on the function? Okay. Are we all common on the normative? What is the normative and the most important thing? That we should have communion. There's the church, and of course, now you know the, the Bible says, as often as you come together, do this in remembrance of me. But it, we don't do that. Many churches have once in a year, many churches have once in a month. So there is, a, uh, is that functionally uh, we are moving away from function? No, I'm still saying that can be a form. How often to take, it's mentioned only in one place, as often as you come together. So I would not hold that as also functional. The fact that as a church, we take part from the bread and the cup, uh, is is most critical now how we use the forms to support that that's not not relevant to the point of primary the function but f forms can divide us for example now pastor sindhyapan and me are very close we have uh, uh, we we are in the same church and uh, philosophically and theologically we are on the same uh, ground also but imagine a form can actually got us to arguing but we may be talking the same thing, but we are arguing from two different sides. So forms can separate us. So whenever we have issues like this in church, it's good to you know, say, and let me also, also put it as a community, maybe as an individual church or a network of churches, it's good to have common forms and patterns, which I respect Pastor Sam for. He told me only that. Ultimately, he told me, uh, George, I'm not going to argue with this. I know what you're trying to say. I know there is no biblical reference for all those things. But we have a pattern and a form which we follow in new life. Let's stick to that, which I respect. Now, that is where I am coming to the point where uh, patterns and forms bring security to people. Uh, and sometimes uh, we need to uh, help people with that area of so that we don't get divided. So we I have a uh, question then, or a clarification. So which means the form can change based on understanding, right? Now, yes. as if my understanding keeps increasing that it is more fear, I would actually take it more fearful. But if, you know, somebody feels that's a my point of joy, let them do it that way. So why are we forcing a form yeah. on a person? Because that absolutely. is their understanding. Actually, absolutely, right? absolutely. Totally. So for example, uh, somebody spoke about the, the dancing during worship, but over a period of time, as we gain more freedom, our forms have changed from, you know, initially being so stoic, we have actually been freed after some amount of time. So I think we have to allow people to gain maturity yes. and over a period of time, the forms can also be impacted. Superb. Nailed it. Now shall we pray and close? <laughs> <laughs> Superb discussion, no, my dear brothers. No, no, I, I thought you will take communion, George. No, head covering next. <laughs> <laughs>
head covering is even more fun <laughs> head covering will nail it actually <laughs> but we, as pastor said uh, it's too late all of you have to go for work and things like that so uh we'll close. but a nice i think it is important we should continue next week also on this to really yeah. help a lot of us a lot of freedom actually no no so we will never stop <laughs> we will argue on forms a lot so that's that's a making sense but I, i i what i wanted was to bring to the demonstration that forms will divide us functions will keep us as one and forms we can argue like whatever argument that me and uh, i created between limu myself and pasu sandeep we are talking the same thing we are not so talking anything different we are talking the same thing with a slight variation of form we are able to see that we are able to i mean i like limu because limu actually is now in my breed okay he took it to the he stretched it to the dogs <laughs> No, just that. Basal, 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 Basal. So that's coming now. I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. It has really happened. It has really happened. It has really happened. It has really happened. Okay, I think uh, you may be right. I don't want to mention the name of the servant of God, but it has really happened. Okay. So, Basal, well, the thing is, like, a year like, back or so, a year back or so. Okay. Yeah. One, one senior servant of God with his family. Okay, he's breaking bread. Okay, hmm. and then the dog comes. Okay. and he has brought the dog to the center of the family uh, and the communion meal mm. okay mm. it is it has happened so what i'm saying is to what level will you okay change the form so i was uh, i am i am of the opinion the form has to be compatible with the function i totally okay. agree with you that's a good learning for us uh, yes. just be compatible with the function. i think pastor john also spoke very clearly okay there's a time for dancing we do dance okay there's a time for hugging okay but there is a this is this function is to so, we are in that same league we are not different we don't uh, uh, i only made it look like we are little very far away from the thing we are the same thing only thing is we get up and hug each other or some people shake hands some people there's nothing wrong there's nothing yeah. wrong so there's nothing wrong. so we don't have you know dancing and all pass pass sam so only one sanjay did greeting when they were which i don't have any problem but he was definitely for the first time he witnessed he naturally would feel like uh, suma told about that sister who got hugged probably she has never been hugged okay she could couldn't handle it. for us when we did a survey of our church i do uh, yearly survey i give out a uh, a questionnaire and i ask people to uh, you want believe one of the one such survey you know the response i got 80% of the people who took the survey said i like this church for one thing this is the only place in the world i have got hugged i have never been somebody wrote i have never been hugged in my life i come here because i just want this is an unbeliever by the way this is the guy who wrote it i want that because i seem to get something which i've never got in my life before what i'm trying to say is the the idea that uh, we have uh, we had a hugging ministry itself okay of course gender specific and all of those things we had a uh, thing it really uh, really helped a lot of uh, people in that journey but you know in every culture every society and every culture that may not be easy so we are very careful in this thing and how we bring these changes also are very slow and steady slowly by slowly so people are able to take it now sam uncle comes suddenly in one service and then suddenly sees the whole thing he couldn't handle it <laughs> or the brother and auntie came and saw it in one shot he couldn't handle it i which i understand which we respect as so sam came and saw but there are so many people without seeing they were all talking about you george <laughs> yeah word uh, word gets around i there's another beautiful word for word for that but i'm not using it here <laughs> it has not come to kerala yet i think we got to start wow. the forms of the it corridor belt of church is being widely talked about yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, uh let's see sibi can you pray and close so pray for all of us in this area <laughs> father we thank you for this time we thank you lord Jesus your word says even as we continue to be your disciples we will know the truth and the truth will set us free help us lord that we will be free to worship you lord help us to understand lord the scriptures lord jesus through the eyes of lord even the culture and the history help us lord father that we will be united not divided lord even as diverse as each one of us is lord help us not to violate lord the commandments that you have given us give us a right understanding lord help us lord to be led by your holy spirit that we will be people lord of unity of freedom 
and Lord Jesus, that the greatest need of this hour, Lord, is for us to be united and preach the gospel. We pray that you will help us, Lord. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you're all open to it, then we can have one more session. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, otherwise we should go to Arthur Patsy and do it. Uh, not today, George. You tell us the homework or you send the homework across. No, no, not today. I'm talking next week. If you want to do one more session, otherwise uh, Joshua will do Arthur Patsy presentation. Joshua, right? Joshua, I asked you only, no? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Already started uh, and done with first two subtopics. So other things uh, are finished. Okay. So we are all trying to keep up with the, with the smart, uh, smart level of uh, presentation now. Yeah. Yeah, amazing presentation. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I had told Pastor George before only when I started reading it, I was very uh, impressed because I could really relate with my own life because I just moved from Marthuma Church very unknowingly, not uh, for anything else. But I was, uh, God in my heart laid on me to accept things that I saw was different. I took some time to even raise my hand and sing songs, like what Pastor George was saying. It, uh, so, Yeah. <laughs> All right. God bless you. Okay. Bye. Have a nice day. You Thank you all. Bye. Bye. So, uh, Joshua, you. you are doing next Sunday, uh, next uh, Friday, you will do the Arthur Patsia. Yeah. Yes. Pastor, any assignments? Uh, I will uh, send out the message. Everybody read Arthur Patsia and come. And complete your map. During the midweek, we will do map, uh, this, uh, this thing, uh, collaboration. And many of you have mm-hmm. finished. Very good. The speed at which you are going is very nice. But that will run parallelly. But next week, we all read Arthur Patsia completely and come. And we would have read the book of Acts completely. I know in one week to read the book of Acts and to read the um, Arthur Patsia is not going to be easy. You'll have to take a one-day break. One day of fasting and prayer dedicated, sanctified unto the Lord <laughs> and to Arthur Patsia. Okay? All right. God bless you all. Bye, Pastor. Pastor Lemo, we should definitely think about the dog thing. (laughs) (laughs) It's coming, it's coming, George. (laughs) Is the church pet friendly or not? (laughs) I loved it. (laughs) You're in my league only. You are the one who gets (laughs) budget. Pastor, did Sharon join uh, last Wednesday? Uh, Sharon joined. Yeah, she did her. uh, But of course, she did a lot of uh, errors. So we shared five points with her. She five, first five achievement summaries we corrected it for her. We told her to correct and come because otherwise it would take long time to correct her whole thing. It's not her fault. She never attended anything. She never saw anything. So, but she understood. I think she's very smart time because without seeing anything, she could uh, do so much. So uh, she should be able to pick it up very fast. Okay, and I think okay. that uh, this also she submitted no, so the. <coughs> The application form, I think. The application form, she's cleared. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, all of our application forms are ready to go. Pastor Somi's was only because he's got COVID, he couldn't send. So that also has come. I will redo it and I will send it off today. And our admission should be in the next two months. We should get our cloud. George, so you are confident that I'll complete the course now? Pastor, I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to, Pastor, you have to finish because you finished a, a psychotherapy course. You can definitely do this because this would be more fascinating and much more interesting. Pastor, but you know, I understand you will have a challenge doing map. I think you should try mm. and get that map done. That's uh, map is going to be a little tricky. It is very good for younger people, but for elderly people, it may be a little, you know, uh, difficult. So I think you should uh, work on the map and read Arthur Patsy. Map achievement summary is 20 writing and then expanding eight of them. It takes a little time. After that, again, it takes time to read that book and mark uh, your uh, this thing, pulling out the data. So there is a lot of, I think Joshua, I think you should help your dad. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Joshua can be uh, really, he can be uh, celebrating his achievement that uh, he's uh, outbeating the father. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Vara, you didn't say anything. You were quite all through. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor, I'm listening to all that, Pastor. <laughs> oh, oh, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Pastor, you can work on the map because otherwise it will never get done. Vara Prasad is finished. Huh? Step on. Pastor, and 20, 20 achievements I finished, Pastor. Expanding I have to do, Pastor. Hmm. I think we are all lagging behind Lemu. Come on. Yeah, I'll, start, I'll start this week here. Yeah. yeah. So start you have got the book. I've sent you the soft copy of the book. Read yes. the book with and watch the videos before you start. Yeah. Read yeah, the yeah. book and watch the 
so if you are doing step one and step two, read step one and step two, watch the video, then only start the writing. Otherwise, you will just make a mistake. Wamo, wamo, no, yada chira no. Basa vara, basa vara. Basa vara, that was interesting. I couldn't understand anything. Can someone translate? <laughs> He is he is preparing for his wedding anniversary celebration. Okay. His wedding yeah, anniversary is on third on Sunday. Uh, uh. He is already dialoguing with his wife. Pastor <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lemo, how are you doing? How is your? Yeah, yeah, I'm better today. I'm much better. Yeah, I was just having this cold that is not kind of uh, going, but uh, now I'm better. Okay. Yeah. So you're taking leave and all as a new year, quarantining yourself. uh no we have actually online classes uh, i haven't which i haven't been taking regularly yeah how is your dad how is mom how is yeah uh, mom is of course uh, she's she's much much better she's she's only doing everything now dad is also i mean he finishes five days of medicine mm-hmm. uh today is seventh day so he's also okay he is much better praise god mm-hmm. yeah i had no covid symptoms until i took the jab <laughs> ah how are you today uh i had bad one yesterday night and then they for Yesterday, God, take care. Take care. Yes. 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 Mm. I'm not looking at that protecting me at all. It's just that you know, as a pastor, people come and ask, "Pastor, have you taken?" It's a very difficult question to answer. It's <laughs> if you say no, then the question is, "Pastor, why did you take?" Are you? Yeah. If you took, then it's a totally different scenario. Okay, you are abiding by government rules or whatever the thing is. Mm. But if I am uh, no doctor. Actually, doc- pastor, mm. my wife has taken pastor COVID shield. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. After taking that, I got uh, we got a message. After two years, they will die. Okay. Are <laughs> <laughs> the news? You are started celebrating. Yeah. Hey. This is the way sister says it. The nice one will be. Hmm. But today you're okay, no judge. Today also you had. Ah uh, no! Yesterday night I was having severe chills and rigors. I took medicine. After that, it calmed down. I think, and I slept off. Well, I woke up and I seem to be okay right now. And the I'm not going to eat beef today. So I die not to eat. Hmm. Mm. Came home. Maria doing? Yeah, she's okay. Yeah, yeah, she's okay. Was the baby scans and all doing? Yeah. Uh, I and mean, we finished the last scan. Uh, she had to take some injection now. She's due in July. July. So, okay. Yeah. Chamar Muhammad. All right. All right. Bye bye. See yes, you. Yes, thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye. Have a great day. Yes. Bye bye.